Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Is there an echo? I'm going to try a different device here and see if it works. Man Mount Link, can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. You guys out there, can you hear me? Anybody that can hear me, type a thumbs up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, and is there an echo? Or am I good? Because I'm trying to fix this thing. Hey, Daryl USA. Can you guys hear me okay? I can see you, 710. Can you hear me? And it, do I have an echo or is it finally good? Because I think I had two microphones going. No echo. Okay, that's great. I, I had two. I've been getting these echoes. And I think the reason I've been getting echoes, guys, I had two microphones hooked up and I did not know it. <laughs> if you can imagine that. All right, here we go. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And I hope you're all well. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the stream. No echo. I love it. I finally kicked. I figured it out. I've got too many things uh, on my I had desktop audio. I had an extra microphone. I had all kinds of things coming on. <laughs> Oh man, I finally figured it out. I just have the one down below. And if that is the one that's on, I have no echo. Imagine that. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good to see you. Good to see everybody today. <laughs> yeah, it is unbelievable. Wonders will never cease. Well, guys, I got quite a few things on the menu for today. And um, it's like a Chinese food menu here today. We got 20 items, which is a few less than I normally do, but I've got some kind of, I got a bunch of silver, got some constitutional, got some nice books in play with some very nice coins. Um, really excited about today's auction to see how things go. Some cool stuff. Got some of the old, like, go-to usual stuff, but um, some neat items. I even have a belt buckle, um, if you can imagine that. I think I, um, yeah, I put it on. Item 17. So, audio stream bit rate 128. Okay. So, as usual, let's see here. I've got um, chat. Box. Which has to go to the top. Um, as usual, I start with Hi Ho Silver, how are you? Thank you for posting up the spreadsheet. Yes, it is also in the link down below. And here's my email, guys. If you're new to the stream, at the top of the screen, what you see is that shipping is $4 up to 16 ounces and $8 over a pound. International is no problem, but it's 15 and 25 for the same weight. Uh, goods and services only. I will refund money if it comes friends and family. Uh, it puts uh, us both at risk uh, in case something goes wrong with the transaction. So, uh, And it risks my PayPal account, which is used for other business outside of YouTube. So... Uh, please wait for invoices. At the end of the auction, I start working on going through invoices. And good to see you, Hi Ho. I'm glad you're doing good and um, appreciate the help. Um, email down below. If you're a first time bidder or it's been a while and you want to make sure that I've got your correct email, 
make sure your address that, it, that you ship to is updated with PayPal because I ship and print labels through PayPal and their protection guarantees are all offered only through uh, the by sending to the address that's listed in your PayPal account. So I just print the label right out of there and that's where I send stuff. Uh, if you need to change it, change it before I send the invoice out and in the... Uh, in the bottom of the screen here, you see the email address. Just email me there, and that's where the email that you send me is one I'll respond for, uh, to with, you know, with with your uh, with your invoice. And I put shipping on there. And also, if you have any problems with any items, if they're returned in the same condition, delivered, unopened, etc., uh, I will honor refunds. Uh, in the case that it's my error. I'll cover shipping. If you're just, you know, unhappy or have buyer's remorse or something like that, uh, then you bear shipping expense. But hey, hidden, great to see you. So that's kind of my, uh, I don't know, my rundown, my deal for today's auction. I'm going to, as I said, start with some copper. I usually do this, and. I've got these 1960D small date rolls that are unsearched, and let's see if I can focus a little better on them. Show you guys the quality of the coinage. There we go. 60D small date. These are small date 60D small dates. As you can see, they're in, they're in very nice. XF plus I would say you know we're probably looking at AU in many of the coins that um, are in here but XF is kind of a safe grade for everybody to be happy right you know what you're bidding on and if you get a little better deal because you find a bunch of AU coins then so be it that's what we aim to do is hunt some value right <laughs> so we got Hi ho at two opening this up. Thank you for the bid and sharp eye jumps in. Hello sharp eye and says three bucks. He's filling a wall or two or maybe every one of them in his house. Instead of insulation, he wants copper uh, pennies. And so that's going to be an interesting house. Uh, you know, a hundred or two hundred years from now, when somebody buys it, and they're like, man, there, there's just these walls are soundproof. It's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, they go to hang a picture up and they can't put a nail through the wall because there's just, you know, 200-year-old copper pennies filling the walls. <laughs> uh, I can just see it now. A lot of um, precious metals and storage. I know a lot of people that do that. You know, they hide stuff in walls in their house. And um, well, I don't know a lot of people. I've heard a lot of stories about that, <laughs> I should say. So it's common practice, I think. It's pretty, pretty funny, pretty cool. Joe's in the lead at three. These are 60D small dates, guys. 710, this is a roll of 1960D small date XF to AU memorial sense. Uh, four bucks. Looking for four. Sorry. Yeah, I don't do 50 cent increments. We'd be here all night. I go $1 to 50 and $5 over. And that's it. So these are X, XF to AU. Hey, Farm Dog, great to see you. Sheena Smith, good to see you. If I miss anybody, Mask Man, hey, how are you? Great to see you. I did get a package from you, just so you know. And uh, I'm waiting to open until I can do a little, uh, a little video action. It's been a busy week. So yeah, I've had some issues with um, some sales that I've made, you know, packages getting lost and stuff like that, guys. So what I'm doing on shipping, as you know, I invoice on Sundays. Usually I get most of my packaging done on Monday and Tuesday, but the blue box uh, that I've been able to drop stuff at, I, I've had some lost packages that were in there. So uh, fortunately, it hasn't really affected anybody in the community here. Uh, there's been outside business. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to drive stuff to the post office. That's a good 30-minute drive for me. And with my work schedule and stuff and the hours that they're open during the week, I'm going to be probably limited to getting mail out like on Wednesdays and Fridays. So like if I on grab bags and things like that, if I can't get it together 
in time to get it out by Wednesday. You know, if I'm still watching videos, figuring out what you like or packaging it together, things like that, uh, you know, I'll be sending that stuff on Friday, which means you probably won't get a package you buy on Sunday and pay for on Sunday night or Monday. You might not see till the following Monday. So it's just the way it is right now until, uh, you know, mail uh, stops getting stolen or lost and thrown by the side of the, I think there's political motivation behind the mail getting lost these days. And my packages are just a part, are, are just a casualty of that. <laughs> so we got Joe going once at $3 on the 60D small date. There's a 60D small date. Unsearched. And what else can I tell you about them? XF Plus. So I would say that the, the enders and most of the coins that I've seen in these in this bulk package of 60 Ds that I bought were have all been uh, you know like a lot of them have been AU, but some of them bordered on XFDU. So anyway. I can. You're right. I can do a package pickup. Uh, I may do that. I may do that. Uh, save me the drive. At least one of the two trips. Um, but, you know, then they scan them, but they don't give you the printout. So even though they scanned it, you don't have proof. It's just a whole, there's a whole thing going on with that. So. Number five. Oh, nice. CC over CC. I love it. I love it. Copper junk. Kellen, did you get your package? Good to see you, Kellen L. I know there's a video coming with that package. I'm kind of pumped to see it. That would be one of those bummer lost packages. <laughs> going twice. Yes. Let me. Thanks for reminding me, Joe. We'll keep counting it down. <laughs> going twice. Are we all in? All done? We've got... We got 60D, XF to AU, small date roll. Any other bids? Snipers beware. I'm going to go ahead and call this down. Okay, I'll check the tracking, Kellen, to make sure. That's like one of those, your package has one of those one-of-a-kind items in it. So it's like, oh, my gosh, it took me forever to find a 4 real. So um, <laughs> anyway, you know, a, a reasonable and nice one. And um, so anyway, it's on its way to you, but it's uh, it, it, I'll double-check on my track okay you know what the other ones that I lost like the tracking never got updated so it was like there was no and yours I think I was one of the ones I actually got a receipt and took to the post office because my second trip on Friday um, so it would have just gone out like Friday right so or or yeah Thursday or Friday I think I went so if they got tracking you'll get it man I'm, I'm excited so Monday all right all in all done fair warning guys last call on the 60d and Fair warning, fair warning, all in, all done. Sold it your way, Joe. Congratulations, my friend. Also, guys, if you uh, were at uh, Cajun Coin Hunters auction, and uh, which was last night, uh, you go on Saturdays and Wednesdays, I've been going over there and participating with them. Johnny Ray, some of the other guys in here, they've been jumping on and selling some stuff. You can find some good deals out there. Joe has too, uh, Sharp Eye for Coins. And part of what you will find is, uh, I lost my train of thought here, guys. Yeah, congratulations, Joe. Um, yeah, on Mondays, that's right, they do. They do, they seem to show up that way. All right, what is next on the block here? Okay, I got four rolls this time. Now, the reason I'm going to sell these as four is because I can't verify based on the ender. I just know they're all 09D BU rolls. So there you go. That's an 09D, but it's a double ender. I can't tell which one it is. Okay, so let's just put that to the side. Then this one is, what is that, early life or, you know, I think it's early life. It's the one where he's got the... The axe next to him, the wood chopper one. Also the 09. These are also Denver, okay? So I know that you've got that early life. And then this uh, this one is, uh, it's either professional life or presidency. I forget. I think that's professional life, right? So I know that that's an 09D professional life. These are all BU bankrolls. 
from 09. And there's the D. Again, this one's the ender. So it, there's a good chance, because of the way I bought these, that you got one of each. I'm, I'm hoping you do. But I can't guarantee it because I don't want to open them to look. So, yeah, the train of thought. I'm just totally off whatever I was going to say, man. I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm just moving on. It's like one of those things where, you know what, if you end up with that bad of a, um, of a brain fart, just clear the air. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just... You gotta just move on. You notice the Ender does have some uh, machine marks going around the Ender on that one, but I don't think the rest of them will be that way. Um, again, I'm assuming you got all four here, but I can't promise that, right? So, let's see, I can adjust the light to give you a better. Let's pick a better one to stare at here. <laughs> that one's all chewed up. All right. This is one money for all four rolls. We got Sharp Eye opening us at 10. Hi Ho was right behind at 10. And then Hi Ho answers back at 11. Yes. You know, that's what happens, right? You get a lot going on. You're, you're, you're up till 3 in the morning streaming an auction on Cajuns. That's what I was saying. I was saying something about streaming on his auction last night. And, and, and I can't even remember now. Uh, what I was going to say about that, but it's okay. If, if it's important, it'll come back to me. That's what my grandmother always used to tell me. If it's important, it'll come back to you, you know? I'm like, okay. Hey, Dub Season 91, good to see you. How you doing? Taking it easy, I hope. And Sharp Eye answers back at 12. Kellen. Uh, I'm sorry, hi ho says out. Thank you. So we got sharp eye at 12. We're looking for 13 on the four rolls of 09 D's. I believe it's all four, but at least two of the four. You got at least two of the four on the rolls. They could be all mixed too. I do sneak those reals past you occasionally. Yes. <laughs> I know. I've put some uh, I've had some Spanish cobs up there and so yeah, it's been pretty cool. All right, going once. Going once on the four rolls of 09Ds. We got 09D, they're BU, these things are blinging. One of them, the Ender has a little machine mark, but you're gonna have really nice coins on the other 49 of them, I'm sure. And I mean, these just are absolutely gorgeous. Bank rolled, tightly rolled ends. Um, Anyway, there's string and sun, penny rolls. These are really nice. Moving them to a new home. I hope it's all four. I think it's all four. You'll have to find out. Have a lot of fun with this. Awesome dub season. Glad to hear it. Going twice, guys. Going twice. Joe's in the lead at 12, looking for 13 on all four. Now, that's four rolls for one money, guys. Four rolls for one money. That is, uh, what is that? That's like... Three bucks a roll right now. Ah. Bad software is the worst. All right, guys. Going three times all in, all done. Snipers beware. We got Joe at 12 looking for 13. Anybody? If not, we'll keep it moving on. Keep on keeping on. No snipers, all at fair warning, all done, all in, all done. I'm gonna call it sold to Joe. Congratulations, Joe. Joe's taking down my copper today, as usual, as usual, right? Got a lot of silver, Got had a little bit of copper. All right, let's see what's next on the list. Let me mark it down, Joe. Thank you for the bids, everyone, and Oh, cool. This next item, pretty unique. Yeah, congratulations, Joe. Indeed. All right, guys. I'm going to need to... I might need to move the camera. I'm not really sure. I put this target here, this mat, so I can see what I'm doing. Um, all right, so this next is what they... is. Whitman has three different style of books, uh, at least three. I mean, they, have, they also make the modern... Uh, 
the Harris books uh, Whitman Publishing does. But what we have is uh, what are this is this is what is called a bookshelf Whitman book. All right, and I'm going to try to move my tripod up so you guys can see what that looks like. I'll just kind of see if I can angle it right. Okay, so on your on your Whitman folders, there's uh, well, there's there's something called a classic, which I'm going to show a little bit later. I have one of those, and then there's the folders, which everybody knows, are like the trifold, and then there's this, which is really nice. It's kind of a it's in between the folder and like the Dansko style classics, right? And what this is, this one has 14 Liberty Heads, including the 83 No Scent and the 83 With Scent. So you get a couple of key dates or semi-key, the 84, the, eight, the 94, 97, 1800s. And these are all, you know, pretty circulated ver varieties. But this is a great starter for somebody that doesn't have any uh, Liberty Head nickels. And I haven't really looked through any of these. So you guys, I bought this from a state, so you guys can uh, have fun, you know, looking for varieties. There's all the dates that it comes with. Again, there's 14 different individual Liberty Coins. We opened the bidding at 10 bucks. We already have 10 from Brando Show, 11 from Daryl USA. And Brand Brando answers back at 12. Daryl's at 13. Again, I would say probably just on the no scent and with scent, even though they are in, you know, probably AG to G condition, probably, you know, probably G4. Um, you've got, you, you've got probably, you know, what, what do you got? Five or 10 bucks right there in those two coins. So the books, these books, you can get them used. Um, I buy a lot of books. Uh, and if you're looking for Dansko's and other books, the best place to get them used is a place uh, up northern the central northern U.S. called Chief Coins. Uh, Red Next Stacker shows up to the party. What is up, Red? Good to see you. Uh, Daryl had answered Brando at 13. Brando answered back at 14. Daryl at 15. Red was a little late at 15. Answered at 16. Daryl's at 17. So these books, you know, used, they're about eight bucks. This one's in really nice condition. Like, you know, it, it's like new old stock kind of condition. Uh, it's obviously been used, so it's a little less than that. But, you know, it's not tattered. You don't have a lot of wear and the edges coming up. And, you know, that's what happens to these as they get older, uh, these books, you know, a lot of times. But these, these are really nice. If, you have, uh, if you're looking for a good middle-of-the-road book, um, you know, not the Dansko expense, but you want something that fits in nicely. And, and you for the smaller collections that have, like, two pages like this, these are great. And uh, I really I like the bookshelf model. The Whitman Classic is the next level up, and that's you know quite a, it's probably twice the price. These used are like in the eight to ten dollar range, and Chief uh, Coin Supply it carries them. So, just to let you guys know. And again, if you want to see more of the dates, the first page is the eighty three with and without cents, the ninety four, and the ninety seven, and then we have the nineteen hundred, the oh one, the oh five, six, and seven. 8 and 10, 11, 12, and 12D. So there's another kind of semi-key, the 12D. Um, you got you have a lot of fun finding these things. You buy buckets or hordes or piles of, uh, you know, V-nickels, as they call them, victory or liberty heads, basically, you know, barber nickels. You, they're called many different things. But, you, you know, you search around and you look for the key dates, like the 1888. Like, that's well, that's one of the key dates. Um, and you'll find them. You know, they're, they're sometimes lumped in. When you buy in bulk, so um, so let's see. We had Red at twenty. Brando show answer back at twenty two. Red at twenty five. Brando show at twenty seven. Red says he's out. We got Brando show at twenty seven. Daryl said he's out as well. Dad, burn it. <laughs> Indeed. All right. So we're gonna start counting down. I think all the bidders have uh, commented. So we're looking for twenty eight. We're going once. Brando show in the lead at twenty seven. I've got three of these type of books up just so that you guys know. So if you're looking to build a collection and you kind of want them in one swath, uh, this is a way to do it. Going twice. Liberty Head Nickel Book. 1883 to 1898 on page one. And then it goes from 1898 to 1920. 
12 on page 2. It's missing the 12S. It's missing, you know, the ultra keys. Some of these can get rather expensive. Uh, but you can find them in, hey, Pammy Jones, great to see you. Hope you're having a good Sunday. And go in twice. But you can find them, like I said. And you can find them, you know, most of these, most of the coins in this uh, series are attainable. Uh, you know, even the more expensive ones within, um, you know, within a reasonable cost. Uh, the 12S is going to be your, probably your most expensive. Um, you know, that, that one may not be attainable. <laughs> it just kind of depends how worn, if you, you know, it's one of those things. That 12S, probably not, I mean, it's a 200,000 mintage, but um, you know what I like to do is get slugs and other things or other nickels like the reverse and put it in there to show what, you know, an S looks like, but you know, that's what people do a lot of times. That's what they do their Merc albums. They put a six, they put a 16 or they put a 17 D upside down so you can see the D, you know, little tricks of the trade. All in, all done. Crispy Kiwi, what is up, my brother? Good to see you. It is good, man. Good to see you. Did your stamp come in yet? You just wanted the book? It got too expensive, huh? Um, you know what? I don't have an extra one of these, but you can go to Chieftain for like eight bucks and get one of these, Daryl. Reasonable shipping. The guy up there is really cool. A lot of coin supply, uh, other stuff that you need. All in, all done. Last call, fair warning. I'm typing. Get your bid in if you guys want it. 28, almost there. Sold it to Brando. All right, guys. Just going to move on. Congratulations, Brando. I'm going to try to do the same thing on the next book. Uh, it's going to be a Buffalo nickel book. This one is also in similarly nice condition for an older book. Uh, let me just mark down the winner so that I don't forget later. And then I'll post this up. Now, I put an asterisk uh, in the description next to the number of nickels. And the reason I did that is uh, I wanted you guys to understand, or I wanted to point out to you that a couple of the rarer dates on the first page on this album have been nicodated okay it means that there was some acid placed so that it would raise the date and see what coin it was um you know buffaloes are notorious uh, and actually i filled a couple holes in this and those were you know they were kind of i mean you know they're, they're not if it was a 30 dollar coin in g you're not going to get that once it's been damaged with acid right but you can see the date so it kind of fills a hole here's the uh Here's the Buffalo book, guys. Uh, we're gonna start at 30 bucks on this one, just based on value of the book. On the inside, it gives you all the mintages and stuff. That's how I knew about that 12S mintage number. I was looking at the cover on the last one. Uh, and I'm gonna pick this, again, I'm gonna try to pick the camera up here and show you guys. Uh, okay, there we go. There's the nickel type. All right. And so, let me do this real quick, guys. This is the eBay trick of the trade, right? You stick a white piece of paper under there, and that way you can see <laughs> you can see what coins are in the album. Okay, let's see if I can work my camera now. All right, so you've got a 13, which may not have a visible date, but it's got the raised mound, so you know it's a 13 variety one. And then there's one here that's the same thing, but it's got a D mint mark. So both of those are backwards in the book. That's a key date 14, key date 14S. I don't think the 14 is nicodated. Uh, that one looks like it might be. 15, 15D, 16D, uh, and 17. The two that really stood out to me were the 17S and 18S as, you know, pretty obviously... that that's been done. Let's see if I can zoom on the coins a little better for you. You kind of see a discoloration around where the date is. Like that's that's what that means, okay? So I just wanted the, uh, I wanted it to be, oh, that's no problem, Chris. Hey, and there's some places online I can send you a, a reference. I got one a long time ago when I bought my furnace. I've never used it, but um, yeah, it would be, um, you know, it, it's, I, I mean, they were, the place I, I found, like, they do logo ones and things like that, and they're, like, under her bucks. But you, you can wait and, and get that one. And, um, all right, guys.
and then and then uh, you know you may get another size or something like that right and when you're if, if you want that info I can send you that in email all right I'm gonna do the same thing and try to slip this piece of paper inside here all right guys so you got the 19s the 20 the 21 the 23 24 24 D 25 26 some some semi key dates in there in this run uh, sharp eye opens us at 30 you got he was waiting to see the which coins we had here a lot of the early date ones I mean when you look at you know these these two pages right here if I can get it to target that I mean there's a there's some gaps there it'll be fun to fill but there's a lot of them and some of them are nicer uh, as you start getting into the later dates there's some really nice coins in here I'm going to show you the final page and this will kind of blow you away some of these are like super nice condition um, this one in particular I call that the unicorn I put a little tab up here that says unicorn and the reason I did that is that needs to be looked at under a scope there is an extra piece of metal on the um, let me see if I can zoom in on it with this scope I don't know if I can get it to really get that clear look at the nose of the buffalo on that 30 you see that extra metal right there at the nose right at the front of the eye there's like a big chunk of metal right on the buffalo's nose see if I can get it focused guys anyway I called it a unicorn because <laughs> it's kind of it's like the placement of it is where unicorn horn would be anyway really cool and then some of these other ones are in pretty nice condition as well um, some of these later dates I'm gonna try to get refocused here again Gotta spin the thing for the focus every time I do that. So, all right, like this 37. I don't want to say something's like AU or anything because it's just. But you know, you know what you're looking at. Like on that 37, that 37D. Um, uh, we can look at the horn on the back and stuff, but yeah. So um, let's see, where are we? So sharp eyes at 30. Uh, it's a book with 46 Buffalo nickels and it's only 30. Yeah. What the Frank? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you figure, I mean, the average Buffalo in, you know, like some of these that are in, in kind of in grade like that or that, I mean, those might be $10 coins by themselves or five bucks, but even if you're just buying buff, Buffalo nickels blind, 50 cents, 40 cents, good rule of thumb on Buffalo nickels a lot of times. And so, you know, if you look at that pricing, um, then when you start looking at grade, the price goes up. And then when you look at what dates you've got, you know, um, <laughs> from the first couple of pages, anyway, pretty cool little book here full of nice buffaloes. If you don't have a Buffalo connect, uh, collection, this is a great starter. If you do have one and you're looking to fill some holes, this might be a great way to do that as well. And you could, you know, combine two, uh, maybe it's an upgrade from a folder to a book. Anyway. I will leave that to your discretion, guys, but uh, the product is nice and I believe starting at a really good value price-wise. So we kill that light because it was giving us all kinds of reflection. Again, you pull your red book out and you start looking at these dates and where they're priced, right? Um, and a lot of these holes are not impossible to fill. Again, I mean, this one may be harder to find within reason. Um, I think they put a three-legged in here. I'm not sure if they've made a hole for the three-legged. I'll have to look again. Um, they did. So, you know, a lot of these books put the three-legged. I mean, you're, you're looking at hundreds of dollars to buy that coin. So if you've got, you know, an acidized, and there's some p potential varieties like this 30, which is in nice shape, um, really well struck and a nice um, a nice example of that coin for a circulated buffalo anyway 
So we at Brando at 31 jumps in. Joe answers back at 35 with a protection bid. Yep, we're still under a dollar a piece for these. And some of these, again, some of these nicer condition buffaloes. I mean, you can almost see, you know, how some of them just have that bling or patina or, uh, you know, luster, I guess some people call it on here. Many of them don't from circulation. Also, I will mention that there's a couple of overdates in this series, and I know that one of these coins has an overdate. <laughs> I'm not going to say which one or point it out or try to sell upsell it because it may be very circulated or, you know, it, it might be environmental damage or, or details grade or whatever, but there is an overdate uh, on one of these coins. So you can have fun looking through all the mint marks and identifying which one value owner was talking about. Um, there is an overdate. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's 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 not an overdate. It is an it's an over mint mark. It's an RPM, but it's it's an it's a mint mark that's repunched over another mint mark. So that tells you a little something. That's that I, I, that's the only thing I was doing is making sure the mint marks matched up with the the slots they were in, and I just noticed it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I'm throwing it out there. Um, as you hunt through these things and look at them it's more than just a book to put on the shelf it's something to have fun with grab your scope grab your loop brando answers back at 37 looking for 38 i'm trying to prevent the shadow but but have the light available and it's not working real great what i need to do is get something where the light still works but it's not as blinding it's an led and it's just Kind of gnarly here. Joe answers back at 40, looking for 41. We're at 40, guys, on the Buffalo book. Now, again, you got the nice bookshelf holder with all, what is it, 46 nickels. So we're still well under a buck a piece for these nickels. Some really good ones in here. And, you know, a $10 book. You know, eight, eight, ten dollar book, I think. Uh, pre owned, I think that's what they sell them for. So it's uh, a, a smoking value, at, even at current price, I think. Brando says out and Sharp Eyes at 40. So I think there's the only two bidders. So I'm going to say going once. Hi, Sheree Ward. Good to see you. How are you? And doors open, guys. We've got a Buffalo nickel book with 46 nickels, including some key dates like the 12D, the 13, and the 13D. We've got the 14 and the 14S, both key. The 15 and the 15S, I'm sorry, 15D, not the S. 16D, the 17, 17D, 17S, 18, 18D, <laughs> 18S, 19, 19D on up and then some of the later dates get into some nice better grade there are a couple naked dated coins but only a couple the majority of them i do not see that on just the earlier some of the earlier uh mint marked teens the only ones going twice we're at 40 there's 46 buffalo nickels in here 46 of them guys and some of them like that 37 are in very nice condition. Let's see. I don't know if I can show you the back of the coin as well. Not as good without that zoom in. Not a full horn, but it has a nice patina. A couple of these have a full horn. Well, a couple of them have like next to uh, what you would call a full horn, like the next grade down. But most of them have pretty good circulation. Wear, visible. All right, looking for 41. I've been calling it down, so we're going to say all in, all done. Last call, guys. Snipers beware. 40 looking for 41. Sold it your way, Joe. Congratulations. Sharp eye takes it down. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. If you guys go, see, if like my grandmother said, if it's important, it'll come back to you. If you guys go to uh, Cajun's channel on Wednesday or Saturday nights and you buy stuff from me, 
on Wednesdays, I will handle it and ship it with stuff that's left over, like grab bags on Fridays. But on the Saturday night auction, I wait until after Sunday and I lump all of the invoices into one. So if you buy stuff on a Saturday night from me, um, yeah, I know it was a smoke and steal of a deal and you know, you know what you were buying and you got yourself some value there, sharp eyes. So I love it. You're going to be pumped up on this and I know you'll love it. I, I enjoy watching you unbox stuff like this as much as you enjoy unboxing it. Just so you know, like it's, it's, uh, <laughs> near and dear to my heart watching people in the hobby just you know enjoy and and uh, find great value and stuff that you know is a beautiful addition to their collection so uh congratulations my friend um but yeah if you guys do buy stuff on saturday nights you, you might not see an invoice from me until sunday night if you don't attend you'll get one regardless if you do attend and buy something at this auction i combine it you pay shipping once just so you guys know all right, so that's the Buffalo book. Now we got the, the SLQs in the same book, okay? So this is the very nice bookshelf uh, version. These are the SLQs, Standing Liberty Quarters, or LSQs, as Whitman likes to call it. <laughs> um, it's 1916 to 1930. Again, on the inside, and these things are all nice. The binders, the inside, it, a lot of times you get the edge of the pages peeling up. These don't have that. These are like, again, they're like new old stock almost. You got all your, uh, you got all your dates in there. Now, this one has some nice, actually that 23 uh, is blinging. Most 23s, they get like worn out. 23s and 24s, the date's like almost completely worn. You can barely make it out. You can see a strong three on that one. You can probably see that guy. It's coming through in the camera. But this one has 12 quarters, which means the melt value, guys. That's okay, I know. You've been going deep, Brando, with the with the folders, man. And I'm, I'm bringing them out because... I've got just, you know, I had bookshelves of these things, right? I've got my own collection and then I've got, you know, like extras and I'm going, you know, what am I, you know, what am I going to do? Like just, I, I've been saving forever. I'm leaving my kids or grandkids, you know, but at some point, like I buy stuff in the state and it's like, okay, I just got to move some stuff on. And that's why you see a lot of gaps. Like a couple of them, I'm like, oh, I got an extra 17D like this one. I had a 17D. So I filled the hole. It was, it looked like it was in a fire or something. Again, I'm going to back this up so you guys can see what we've got. But there is, let's see, uh, eight, let's see, 13. I type it in the chat. Yeah, there's, uh, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's 13 SLQs here, guys. I said 12. This is well below spot. Well below spot. Uh, hey, Zaphiel, good to see you. I got Brando's show in the lead. He, he jumped in first at 60. Now Joe Sharp at 65. So just to keep you current, guys, there is a 17. I mean, let me just pick this up again like I was doing. There's a 17D here. Uh, you know, I might have a 17 variety one. So whoever wins this, hit me up offline. I may have one that... You can tell it's a 17. It's got no date, but it's got no stars on the back. That's what the variety one is. Um, and then variety two, they put stars below it, but it had the um, the 17 date. This one's almost impossible to find. You might as well just put a the reverse of it and just show the reverse because, I mean, you know, some people have them, but, I mean, we're talking uh, 52,000 of these minted. I mean, it's like basically, you know, effectively like in the range of some of the rarer gold coins of the day. <laughs> so... That's a tough one to find. Um, you know, you can get them, but they're going to, you know, the, the whole value of your book is going to be tied up in that one coin, right? If you get to that point. Um, I don't own a 16 uh, SLQ. So if you do, kudos. More power to you and congratulations on that. It's a beautiful piece in any collection. So there's a couple key dates, right? The 17D version one and this, and then the 23, that was, that's a semi key show you why you know that it's like that. There's no stars underneath underneath the eagle on the back. There's no stars. And then if you come down on the others, what you'll find is, let's see if I can get you guys. You see those three stars below the eagle right there. So that's the difference between variety one and variety two. 
Now here's the other dates for you guys. They're all the more common dates, but uh, there is some of the mint marked ones, which are a little less common. And that is the 25, 26S, and 27. 28, 28D, 28S, 29, 29D, 29S, 30, and 30S. All right. So those are your SLQs in your SLQ bookshelf. This is a Whitman bookshelf. Now I had missed, I had miscounted uh, how many are in here. Um, we got some bidding going on, guys. Uh, let's see, we got an auction. Zappa was at 60. Sharp I answered at 65. To Brando shows 60 hour opener. Brando answered back at 80. Sharp eyes at 90. I will find I will find the 17. It will not have a date, but it will have um, in fact, I'm going to look right now. I'm just going to throw it in based on the price that you guys have this up to. The melt value on these quarters obviously is not what dictates the price when you get into numismatics, but I do want you guys to, uh, you know, get a good deal, understand what you're buying and everything like that. So hold on one second. Um, and make sure that you guys get your... I've had things where people bought things, they went for a little higher price than I thought they should go to, and I ended up throwing in um, <laughs> coins into the package to make sure that they got their value. So just so you know, when you got, I got to sleep at night, guys, and when it comes down to it, uh, just wanted you guys to be aware uh, that that sometimes may happen. So if you get an extra in your package, it's just me thinking that you paid a good price for it and I needed to add a little juice to the deal. Uh, all right, so yeah, so the mail on these came out I started it below melt or at melt um, is what I was trying to do. But let me just look. Okay, so I have a 16, but it's not a. Uh, it's not. It's it's a. Uh, all right, let me look here. Okay, I've got a few of these. So 17, 17. Let me pick through them and find one here. Yeah, type one warm date. Here we go. All right. I'm going to throw in a type one with no date into this. Whoever wins this gets a type one with it um, at no, you know, at, for the winning bid. There's nothing extra on that. This one actually, there's two of these that I have with worn dates. This one, you can actually see the bottom star. So that's the one I'm going to throw in. It's better than the other. Um, so there's your 17 worn date variety one. And we have, we had Brando, Sharp Eye at 90, Brando at 100, Sharp Eye answering back at 110. Hey, John Wolf, good to see you. And Aaron, hello. Uh, okay, let's see. All right, guys. So I can't see my screen anymore. So now I've got, okay, so you guys can see. So yeah, so there's no date on the back of this coin. I mean on the <laughs> on the obverse of this coin. But you see what I'm talking about? There's that bottom star right there. So having those stars visible, the other one was worn right there. And it says worn date. But the reason you know that it's a 17, I mean, I'll be frank with you guys, this could be a 16. Um, there's no way to tell. And you can't, you know, get the date to come off or anything like that. I can almost make out the seven on this one. Or is that a six? How funny would that be? Well, regardless, you guys have seen it. It's going in. The... You can kind of make out a seven. I don't know if you can on the camera. At a certain angle, the light hits it, and there's like a line right there. And that that's like the base of the seven underneath her left foot. You can kind of make that seven out a little bit. Anyway, um... This one is not in the book yet, and so it will be added. I will just put the flip in uh, with it, so you guys can put that in yourself. It'll be it'll be your first addition to your new book, whoever the winner is. So we're looking for uh, 115. We're at 110. It's been quiet for a little bit. Uh, Brando may be thinking about it, so I'm going to start calling it down just to give you a heads up. I usually take a little bit of time on items like this where there's been some action, just because you know it maximizes things for me but also people lose connection and stuff like that right so uh it's all fair in 
the way that we do the auction. All right, so we're going once. Brando, he does answer back at 15. So we got 115 looking for 120. 115 looking for 120 on the SLQ with two, uh, both of the 17 version one. Uh, well, there's no, there's an S as well. There's an S that, um, 17S that you can find. So you can look for that. The mint marks on these coins, in case you guys don't know, is right down next to that star that I was pointing out. So the way we know this is not a D or an S, even though we know it's a 17 because there's no stars underneath the eagle. And if it was a 16, I mean, it could be a 16 or a 17, but a 16 uh, would be worth a ton more even without the date, if you could even slightly make it out. This is a 17, I believe. And right next to that star, in between the star and the edge of that pedestal, there would be a D or an S punched in there. And that's how you can tell if you're looking at one, even if there's no date, you can sometimes find an S or a D and fill a hole in your in your album, you know, without spending an arm and a leg because there's no date on it. So you can find a good deal on a coin like that. You know, maybe pick one of these up that would sell for a lot more if the seven was visible. All right, so thank you guys. Yep, looks like we've got that. That was the max. Okay, Brando in the lead at 115, looking for 120, going once. I'll start counting it down. And okay, it's saying I have a uh, my 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 stream setting is poor. Do I open the widget? Do I dare open a widget? <laughs> um. All right, what happened here? It's not getting enough video, it says. All right, I don't know what that means. All right, everything look good to you? All right. Um, 710, I, I know what you mean, man. I mean, it's how I got into flipping and selling and, you know, buying and selling coins. I was buying for my own collection and found that I was finding deals all the time that I couldn't get into. And I was like, you know what? I, I got to start selling some stuff. And so I started an eBay store a number of years back. Uh, and... Then that transitioned into, you know, seeing some guys that were kind of original doing auctions on here, like, uh, like Robert and uh, Travis and then saying, Hey, um, I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to try my shot, especially when they sort of start sort of slowed down, you know, kind of beginning of this year. Uh, and there was kind of an opportunity and, and it seems like it's really picked up. You know, there's a lot of auctions, which is good for the hobby. You know, it's really good. Um, I just try to bring great deals. That's my main thing. I see a lot of auctions going where it's, you know, I, I mean, I can't believe some of the prices that are getting paid out there. I don't ever feel like that. Like I said, I got to sleep at night. All right, going twice. Are we all, are we all in all done? Is everybody still out there? Third and final, fair warning, last call. Are we done? At 115. Looking for 120. If not, we're sold. All right. I'm going to actually pull that out. Congratulations, Brando. It's a beautiful book. Uh, and that will give you two of the three. The bookshelf albums are quite nice. All right. Get this piece of paper down. I've got one more album today, but it's coming up a little bit later. Packed with silver. All right, one fifteen. There we go. All right, guys. Uh, this next set, I've got. I've got actually two. You got it, Brando. Uh, hey, seven ten. Thank you. I try. I try to. Um, you know, it, it's like. At least, you know, the way I look at it is if you're in an auction, sometimes things sell for a higher price than you feel comfortable with. But I try to bring, bring good product that, like, I buy for my own collection. I figure, you know, people, uh, like, water seeks its own level. Like-minded people flock together. Birds of a feather, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like, you know, you find people that are into silver stacking as well as collecting numismatics and crossing over. And then a lot of times what happens is, um, you know, you you – you bring stuff that really interests people because they have the same taste as you do. And then, you know, if you're hunting deals like I do and hunting value, 
uh, being able to at least start the bidding there. Sometimes people bid stuff up like crazy. And again, like I'll throw in extra coins sometimes uh, when that happens because I just feel like, you know, I want to make sure everybody has a good feeling at the end of the day with, um, with what they're doing. This is going to be an 07 set, guys. Now, the 07 set came with an outer white cardboard uh, that is not here. And it also came with a presidential dollar set. Um that is not here, okay? Now, I do have an 07 with a presidential dollar. Hey, Ed Morley, good to see you. If I missed you coming in earlier, anybody else that's in here as well, apologize. i am uh, got my eyes on two or three things at once. So this is the 07 set. This is a, what I would call partial, but this is the proof set. So you can actually buy the presidential dollars, you know, for 10 bucks separately on eBay, pretty commonly easily found. Uh, if you just shop and hunt a little bit, probably the going price is 15 to 20 for those, but you can pick them up on a deal for, you know, eight to 12, 10 bucks, let's say on average for the 07 presidential. And then you've got yourself a complete set, right? Cause right now this is just the box and it's 10 of 14 proof coins, seven of which are silver. The melt value on this set alone is around where we're starting it out. Ed says, Hey, I'm in at 35. And Zaphiel answers back at 36, which is right about where we are melt and face value wise. And when I say melt and face, it's because this and this coin are silver, as are all of these. And so all of the silver coins total maybe 33 bucks or 32 bucks in silver. But then you have a dollar here, penny, you know, here, a nickel here. So you kind of add it all together and that's what you get. So this is, so when you hear me say melt and face, that's why, because there's some coins that don't have silver. So we don't calculate the base metal melt value. We just calculate the face value because it's worth more. All right. It says I have an excellent stream again. So I was in the lead at 36. We're looking for 37. This has the COA. So I would call this a partial set because the presidential dollars, the $4 are missing. But again, 10 bucks, uh, you've got a complete set. And these, you know, uh, will typically sell in that range. In fact, I started this one 10 bucks below the next one for that very reason. Yep, looking for 37. We can count it down though. Uh, if we don't have any interest, Ed might be thinking about it at 36, look for 37, but we'll call it down. If not, we've got 36, we're going once. Yeah, and if you're bidding away, guys, don't, you know, you bid on stuff that comes up, that that's good, but also keep in mind, the list is posted down below, so there may be some other things here today that you have on your radar or that you have to own, just have to have. Hey, Sterling, good to see you, my friend. <laughs> How are you? Great to have you join. Glad you made it in. We got an 07 silver set that's going for about the melt value on it right now, Sterling. 36 going once. I think I said one. Oh, Ed Morley answers back at 37. So we have 37 looking for 38 going once. I'm going to check the melt on these actually while you guys are bidding. We got 37 looking for 38. Okay, the 07 and 08 sets actually melt and face value is 37.67 according to Coinflation, which is what I use to identify value. Uh, when I'm buying these things, a lot of times if you guys see these things come up, I, I might have paid the same price as you. Uh, if I was, you know, able to get them when silver's at 22 or something, maybe I make a few bucks. But a lot of times, uh, you know, you're buying stuff at or around melt value. I'll, a lot of times I'll start it below that, hoping that it gets there and uh, being willing to risk a couple dollar loss so that somebody gets a good deal. And I keep turning over the lots that I buy, you know, cause I, I buy bulk stuff. So a lot of times that's why you see me come up and then week after week, I've got, you know, four or five of the same item because, you know, I bought them that way. Um, Ed's in the lead at 37. Zaphael's thinking about it. We're going once, start the countdown again, looking for 38. We are still under melt value uh, without shipping. This is an under melt, melt value price for this set. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm off by four bucks because I'm looking at coinflation and that would include the presidential dollars, I'm pretty sure. So that 37.50 would be reduced by four. So it'd be 33.50 mil. And uh, <laughs> there you go. Correcting myself at, at midstream. All right, Edward Morley in the lead at 37, looking for 38. All right, sounds good, Sterling. No problem. Hey, you're gonna be pumped up. I know there's something in the package I sent out. I didn't go out till late this week on your grab bag. 
but there was something in there that I know you love, so uh, <laughs> enjoy. And and I, and I believe I was well below melt this week. Um, I, I took it in the pants. Took it in the seat of the pants, dude. Took it in the shorts on this one. And Sterling, you're so funny, man, calling me out. You're like, yeah, I don't know how this – Val doesn't understand a profit deal. You know, he's doing these auctions and then he's selling stuff. He makes no money on these grab bags because he's selling stuff below melt value, you know. And I love the video, man. I was smiling the whole time you were saying that. But the truth of the matter is you were right. On those grab bags, I typically do not make money. That is not where I make money. I love – this hobby and I love, you know, I love stacking. I love the community. So it's kind of my, the grab bag is kind of my way to give back a little bit. It, and, and it's not where I look to make a profit. In fact, I usually will price things. You know, if somebody spends a hundred, I'll price it at 125. That, that would be, you know, usually around what the retail and or melt cost would be. So that somebody gets a really, really good deal. You know, that's the way I want them to feel when they open it up. And you know, the problem is that I lose a little money on those a lot. Like every week the grab bags, but it puts me in a position where I'm, I'm, I'm turning over some cash that lets me buy other stuff. So there, there will be items where, you know, if I lose five bucks per grab bag or 10 bucks per grab bag and I sell five of them, okay, you know, I'm down 25 to 50 bucks, but then, you know, maybe I make $50 on a gold coin or on, you know, a, a mint set or something like that, right? So it's like, okay, in the long run, it's fine. It comes out in the wash, right? So, yeah, I know you love them. I can tell when you open them, and that's the whole reason I do that, man. It's like <laughs> you're going to spend that money to stack your silver and collect your coin somewhere, you know, and uh, if I can find some good deals and it puts me in a position to, you know, take advantage of deals I find, then I'm, I'm pumped up on that, so. Yeah, 122. Yeah, and I actually I have a list, Sharp Eye, of every grab bag I've ever sent to every person that's ever bought one. It's it's actually, I've had to go on multiple pages because I've had, I've, I've literally probably got about eight pages of notes. And some of them were jotted down because I'm watching their videos and what they like to collect, et cetera, et cetera. And then I put a dollar amount, either, re, you know, if it's copper coins or something like that, then there's a retail value. If it's silver, it's pretty easy because I tie it to melt, even if it's a collectible silver coin, I'll still tie it to melt. So you, you can end up with a $50 coin that I was able to get close to melt and you end up getting it close to melt as a result, right? Like, so those are kind of the cool things that you can do. Um, all right, so looking for 38 going twice. We're gonna count it down. Going once, going twice. Looking for 38. Zafael, you still out there thinking about it or uh, may have stepped away? I don't want him to lose the opportunity if he wants to bid. I do have another one of these coming up, so I'm gonna go ahead and count it down. All in, all done. Last call at 38 for Ed Morley. Fair warning. And we're sold. Congrats. 38 to Ed. Uh, let's see here. You know, I, I mean, sometimes, I mean, it's almost, a, it's almost a problem, right? Because like if, <laughs> Because I get myself in trouble by, that way, right? But I, I've done it, – it's worked out well for me so far. And it's only one aspect of this, right? Like I like I like the high-grade coins. I like graded coins, things like that. And a lot of times when you find deals, there's, you know, there's more meat on the bone. So it's like you just, you just look at things like that. And um, all right. So congratulations to Ed Morley on the 07 Silver Proof set. That is packaged up. And will be on its way to you. Now, I have one more. Of these. And this one actually does have. Uh, and we're going to start. This does have the presidential dollars. And we're going to start this at 45. I'll show you guys the sets. It's the same 07. Just it has this extra box with the presidential dollars in it so this is a complete set the box is showing a little sign of wear on the edge from being opened and looked at or whatever but i'm going to do it anyway this one also does have the coa in there which is good to see the 07 silver proof set there's your proof silver quarters obverse and obverse and reverse congrats ed yeah double congrats man uh, beautiful 
man, the, that nickel is satiny. It almost looks like it's toning up or something, but it's not. It's just beautiful. Deep cameo, but like a darker hue to it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Anyway, um, again, $37.80 or something like that in melt and face value. Um, and then this one does have the COA and it's got the presidential dollars. These are proof dollars as well. Statue of Liberty on the back. Hey, Jeff Dunn, great to see you. All right, Brando, we'll see you when you, when you get back. Starting bid, 45. how I can position these to kind of show them off the best. I really don't know if I can without. There we go. Try to put them on my stand, but that's not working, so try it like that. All right. Hey, Roger S., great to see you. How have you been, my friend? It's been a little bit, huh? Good to see you. We're, uh, we got a 2007 silver proof set on the block if you're just joining us. And there is, let's see, 1.33 ounces, uh, 1.34 approximately ounces of silver in this set. So you got 1.34 ounces of silver, you've got numismatic value, you've got all the presidential dollars. We got the full set here, the last one was a partial. You got it, Sterling. You have a good one, my friend. Uh, I'm going to watch them, Sterling. This week was crazy for me, but I'll get in there and do that. This is the 14 full 14-piece full 14 set. Yes, sir. I'm glad you made it too, Roger. Busy is good sometimes, especially with the environment we've been in the last year, right? I mean, busy is real good. A lot of sitting on our hands in the last couple so we got this uh, the 07 set, guys. I think I think the uh, I think the price is right, but um, I may be wrong. I think the price is right, but I may be wrong. I'll tell you what. I'll do a buy it now at 45. I'll do a buy it now. Roger S comes in at 45 and says buy it now. I'm gonna do a bin. Just type bin in there, Roger, and I'm gonna call it sold, and we'll move on. I'm going to say going once, going twice, <laughs> sold. There you go. It's official. All right. Congratulations. I'm thinking about where the last one sold and then the presidential dollars, you know, and I think eight bucks on those is a good deal. I don't think you can find them on eBay with shipping for that price. So that, yeah, there you go. Roger's bin. The set is yours. It's on its way to you. Congratulations, and with shipping and everything, I think that's still, you know, that's fair market right there. So 1.34 ounces of silver and some presidential dollars headed your way. Congrats, Roger S. And if you guys are thinking about bidding on something, you know, take the plunge because, you know, that's, that's what happens sometimes. It's like I want to move on, and I'm going to pull it down, so I'll offer a bin beforehand. Uh, I'm going to uh, not do that on this next set because these are probably, you know, 80 to a hundred dollar sets. This is the key date set for the series. Other than the 12, we're going to do a $55 starting bid. Congratulate. Congratulations, Roger. Uh, this is the 99 proof set. And what makes this one, the key date is the quarters, the statehood quarters. I'm just going to inspect real quick to make sure that this set is complete. It is. So you've got the original government packaging for the 99 set. Uh, I would challenge you to find this out there or even, even close to this price, um, starting bid-wise. Joe knows it and jumps in at 55 So it, it has this, which this lens and the coins in it, you can find these for 15 or 20 bucks by themselves because a lot of people broke them out and got the quarters graded the quarter it's got the coa in here with it so this is a complete set guys um the quarters in this set are what demand the premium uh it has 
Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, and Connecticut. And those quarters are the key statehood quarters. So this particular this particular run right here is your money run for the silver proof sets. And I would say fair market is 75 to 100 bucks typically. So we got opening bid at 55 on it. Uh, here's your obverse. Here's your reverse on these. Deep cameos. I'm trying not to flip you guys off there with my holding of the lens. All right, and so we've got a starting bid at 55. Joe, Joe opens us up at 55. We are looking for 60. It's a beautiful set. Again, this set ships for four bucks unless you have other stuff coming and it gets over a pound. Um, it, it's, uh, they, they, they still meet weight and everything. And I usually take the box and I'll put a piece of cardboard on top and underneath the box and then put it in a padded envelope. That usually does good enough to get it there without any cracks or anything like that. If you guys ever do get anything like this and it's not exactly what you saw, like there's a crack in a lens or something like that because they, you know, somebody sat on it and just the lens got a crack, let me know because I'll do one of two things. I'll, I'll, I'll probably do both things, but I'll send you a replacement lens if the coins are not damaged and that way you've got your set just like you should. Um, and then secondly, you send me pictures of the damage and I'll send it to the post office and we can get, you know, an insurance claim on it because that's not, that's just not right. They're supposed to take care of it. And I write fragile on there and stuff. So just be aware if you guys get stuff, um, you know, from me, it should be how you saw it. <laughs> if it's not, let me know. It gets packaged. Man, Mountain Link, you do pretty good at paying attention, man. I mean, you, you are like a machine when it comes to knowing the difference in value between, um, you know, like uh, cheddar and onion flavor and like chicken and waffle flavor, Pringles. Like, I don't know how. That is a lot of information to be storing up there, man, as you're walking in and doing your deal every day. <laughs> it's kind of the way it is with coins, you know. I kind of like, I just know what certain things are worth because I'm in and out of it every day. Then there's things I don't, and so I'm learning, right? Which is kind of cool, and I enjoy your videos immensely. I must say, I, I there's there's some of my favorite. They're to, it's what's great is they're totally off topic. I get down these rabbit holes of like metals and mining, economic. It spills over into political commentary. There's all these things going on, you know, and you're just like, you know, uh, Zafael, five dollar increments. We're looking for sixty, my friend. We're at fifty five, looking for sixty. Um, sharp eye, we're at 55 looking for 60. You're in the lead at 55, but thank you for protecting your bid. I'm just going to explain how that works. We're at $5 over 50. So I'm just going to remove those two so that you guys have a clean list of uh, or a clean, a clean order of bidding here. So we're at 55. We're looking for 60. Thank you for the bids though. Zafael box is in decent condition. Let me show it again. I don't see any major marks. There is a little bit of wear on the corners, but not bad. It's not ripped. The end pieces are still in there. And the same thing on this side. You can see where there was some opening marks on the edge of the box right there. But, and it's a little bit bent up on the corner there, but very, very good condition, I would say. Excellent condition, very good to excellent. <clears throat> That's okay. Yeah, I mean, price these out, guys. I always welcome you to, you know. Um, we're live, and you got time. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, well, there's endless knowledge out there, right? Yes, it is unmistakable, isn't it? Yes, the big, big red fragile. Do not crush written on the back. That's how I send everything. <laughs> and it's it seems to work pretty well. I don't get, I've had like one box that didn't make it, and I got a complaint. And actually, that was a long time ago, and it was on my eBay thing, and it's because I packed the envelope too tight. I mean, it's like, you know, trying to save somebody money on shipping, and then they're complaining. You know, that's what happens. That's why I, I, eBay drives me a little bit nuts, Man Mountain. But I do enjoy watching your stuff because it's completely off topic from everything else I watch, right? So it's it's kind of like, it's a break. Now, the other thing that I'm into is watching gold panning videos. I don't know if you guys watch gold panning. Okay, that crosses over into coins and metals and stuff. There's one, there's one guy out there, his name is California Gold, uh, California Mother Load Prospecting. 
the dude's channel is just a blast. He has a really soothing voice. Uh, he's a firefighter up in Northern California that like, you know, he spends all his spare time doing prospecting for gold and panning for gold. And, you know, I have enjoyed off-road vehicles in my day and four buying and things like that and dirt bike riding. And he goes out there in these old quads, uh, razors, you know, Polaris, uh, dirt bikes, a pack full of gear on his back. And he's riding through these trails in California. I'm going to say going once to Joe Sharp at 55 if nobody's going to jump in at 60 here. Uh, the set is way undervalued. Joe, you're stealing values here today. It's good to see, but uh, holy cow, I should have probably uh, taken a look at my – thought my – I tested the waters here to see what opening bid might be, uh, you know, or what kind of bidding action we get and see if the, if the key date type stuff is of interest or if people are just mainly silver stackers in my streams. And it seems like, you know, more of the silver stackers, less of the coin collectors. Although you and Brando and a few of the others, good, good solid coin collectors as well, I know. And many others and many others, um, Ed and, and, and Paul and some of the other guys that are in here. Um, but I will say, that that guy's videos are, are almost like, you know, it, it's like an evening of entertainment. I mean, just put them on and pop some popcorn because he finds gold. He's interacting with a bunch of friends out there in the wilderness, you know, in the California mountains. And it's not like the highly populated and, you know, uh, they're not dealing with the, uh, with, with the plague of, um, you know, society that's going in the big, on in the big cities <laughs> where they're at and the beautiful scenery. The water's crystal. It's just amazing. You guys got to get over and check out that guy's channel. Um, Silver Bean Counter, what is up, my friend? It's so good to see you. I have, I've been remiss on jumping over and uh, making some comments. I've watched a couple of videos recently and uh, have and didn't post, couldn't think of anything smart enough to say. Not enough witty retort to even warrant a comment, but I'm always checking you out, man. <laughs> Give you a thumbs up at the very least. Silver Bean Counter is a guy that probably was the most influential in my YouTube journey, uh, I would say. Him and Losing Louie, probably, the, probably the, the most uh, influential guys to me. I started watching Silver Bean Counter back probably in like, I don't know, 17 or something like that. And uh, my first trade video was with him. And he got me into the Metals Mafia over on Mike. Uh, they had Monday Night Mayhem where they would do live silver pouring. And I found this whole new community that I didn't even know about. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Oh, man. Got me into uh, got me into community poured silver. So we got a 99 silver set. We're at 55. Looking for 60. Going twice. What is going on, Rafe? Great to see you, my friend. Silver Bean Counter says, thumbs up, no problem. I know, right? Hey, Roger. <laughs> Thank you. No super chat. Oh, don't rub it in. Well, hey, you can throw five bucks on a set. You know what I mean? That's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. I can't get to a thousand. It's so funny because I thought about it going all in, all done, guys. We're at 55 looking for 60. I'm going to call this one down and move on to the next item. The silver bean counter, I got a lot of silver starting below milk tonight. Um, so just letting you know, keep an eye peeled on some of these items coming up. I got a Dansko album. Uh, not Dansko, it's a Whitman uh, album. And I've got, uh, what do I got? Oh, I got a belt buckle on the block tonight, if you can believe it. That's like almost four ounces. It's a sterling belt buckle. The thing is so killer. Uh, it, it's just one of those collectible items that, you know, I got to move it on <laughs> to a new home. But the thing is, it, it's a cool and unique way that I stack silver. I'll get into that a little bit. Um, yeah, great group. I mean, just an amazing community, you know, and it's, and, and I cross over from the coin collecting community into the silver stack community. I love both and both kind of have the same, you know, mentality and heart and, uh, and care for one another and, um, you know, kind of watching out for each other's back, so to speak. So, and Silver Bean Counter, your, uh, your exemplary uh, and, you know, member of that community, of this community, and everybody in here should be checking you out. But around, around the time that we did Dean's auction, uh, I was like, okay, all in, all done, last call, fair warning. All right. Zafael came awake and said 60. See, that's why I slow roll you guys a little bit. You know, I get the $60 bid out of Zafael. Thank you, Zafael. 60. I'll start the count over going once. So, yeah, uh, you know, what ended up happening is we did the Dean auction, and I, I, I was like five away from 1,000. 
I was like, literally, I was like, nine ninety five. I'm like, wow, I'm gonna get done with this auction, and it's gonna take me a month to ship all this stuff out to people. But when I'm done, I'm gonna do a giveaway at a thousand. And so, you know, I said I was gonna do that. Um, I think I mentioned it, but I was waiting for it to happen organically because you know, guys post it up when they're a hundred or two hundred below, trying to bump themselves and get there. And I'm like, I want to hit it organically on my own. You know, people that are subscribed to me, they're not just looking for handouts. They're looking for good content. They're, they're like-minded, like-spirited people, you know. And so that's what happened. Um, four ounces. The thing is a serious belt buckle, man. It's got the U.S. Mint. It's got the U.S. The seal of the U.S. Mint. So it's like the mint uh, or the U.S. seal. So it's got like the mint insignia with the eagle on the front of the buckle. And it's like brushed sterling silver. It's sick. I'm telling you. You're going to like it, Bean. You're going to like it. Um, Okay, going once, going twice, looking for 65. Sharp Eye says he's out. All right, I lost one of my bidders. Sharp Eye's probably ticked off at me too. He's like, dude, I had that thing at 55 for an hour, and you just sat there and chatted my ear off until Zaphael got sick of it and typed 60. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that to you over five bucks, Joe. I hope you know. I'm just having a good time here. Um, all right, so are we all in, all done? Joe says, Sharp Eye says he's out. So we got Zafael in the lead at 60, which looks like it's gonna be the winning bid unless anybody else wants to jump that shark at 65. Going all in, all done, fair warning, last call, guys. And if not, Zafael sold it your way at 60. All right, Joe, apologies on that one, my friend. For slow rolling you, I'll try. I'll try to remember not to do that. I, I think you're okay with it though, based on the value you got on that other album. So yeah. So what ended up happening is YouTube stole my subs, guys. I went from like you know nine whatever it was ninety five down to uh, you know and maybe just people you know were there for the auction and the free giveaways and things like that, right? That could be too, and they just weren't you know. They weren't really interested in what I had to say. And I stopped putting out content for like a month because I was packaging up stuff and, and dealing with emails with people and trying to get them their items. And, you know, there was a lot going on during that auction period, right? And then I started doing my own auctions around that time. So, anyway. All right, here's one for the coin collectors, more so than the silver stackers, I would think. But it's a $35 starting bid. It is a... 41 set in a capital holder and all the coins in here are XF plus um, you know I would say XF is the lowest grade it, it will come in this little protective sleeve for the holder especially the half and the dime uh, I would I would call them you know it's like they're like borderline AU coins um, there's circulation your signs of circulation I don't think cleaning uh, I see brilliance on that coin. You can kind of see what I'm talking about, but there's definitely some circulation where I look at the leg, I'm, I'll, the pickup points out of it. There is some scrapes, you know, like hairlines, and it, it makes you wonder was it rubbed with a cloth or something, but I don't think that it was. And then you look at the breast feathers on the back, M many are clear and detailed. I'm going to try to get it in better shape. There you go. You can see that half. It is beautiful silver, guys. Hidden opens us up at 35. He knows the value when he sees it, especially when it comes to the numismatics. Uh, there's the quarter. That one also, I would. It's you know it's def it's all of XF guys. So you know it might be AU. Look at the breast feathers on that. You see the you see the mesh pattern across the breast feathers. If I can get the lighting right, you can see it. And then the dime is really the one. This might be AU, even borderline BU on the dime, but it is toned. It looks like it was in somebody's book, or maybe it's from the plastic. I don't know. It's not a full band. Uh, they, they are connected, but it's got it's a really good strike otherwise, and good separation on all of the, uh, the, uh, of the other devices. Uh, it is toned up. It's gorgeous. I don't know what the toning's from, if it's book toning. I would say XF on the nickel and the cent. They're the lower end and probably the easier, or more common coins in the uh, in the in the in the forty one. And I'm just going to make sure, yeah, no mint mark that I missed because I said mint set. It's not a year set. It is a mint set because of that. Um, so we're at 
Sharp uh, Ed came back at 36. Sharp Eye jumped a bit at 40, a little protective bid. Hidden said not enough, 41 on the 41. So we're at 41 on the 41, looking for 42. Capital Plastic Holder right here is probably, a, you know, whatever, 8 to $10 value by itself. Uh, and it's like brand new out of the packet. In fact, it still has the package. <laughs> and we're at 43. Joe's in the lead at 43, looking for 44. The, the dime, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you take a look at this and decide if it's BU. Uh, even at BU coin, if it's not full split band, it might not be a, you know, a grader on Mercury's, but it is certainly a nice addition to any collection, I would say. I'm trying to give you a, some angles so that you guys can see the, you know, kind of the way the cartwheel and the luster in some of these coins that still exists plays with the light. Uh, certainly on the dime it pops out you can see that cartwheel action right and the, and the quarter probably a bit too and the half they're just very nice a beautiful set guys um, we've got 41 from hidden answered back and then Joe uh, said for a sharp eye for coin said 43 hidden has passed and said he's out but he didn't pass out so we're at 43 looking for 44 thank you for the bids everybody Ed's thinking about it. Sharp Eye's in the lead at 43. We're looking for 44. We're going once. Hey, America, good to see you. On the road, just like Johnny Ray. And Silver Bean, if you're still out there, dude, I appreciate you coming into my streams and showing me a thumbs up, showing me a support. You're like the, like the OG for me, man. You, you're, 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 my, you're my peeps. <laughs> and I appreciate you. A lot of the good folks that I met in this community are because of, of Silver Bean Counter. And uh, so that's always, that's always cool. You always have people you watch or you, you commiserate with or that you communicate with. You jump on their channel when they're, you know, newer and, you know, you see, you know, them get traction. And, and Silver Bean Counter wasn't even really newer when I jumped in there. And, and you know, he was, he was in the thousands on his subscribers probably at that time. Uh, but, you know, yeah, dude, you were uh, communicative with me. Even the brand new guy would like, you know really no content no channel and we did a trade and it hooked me into the, the world that is youtube now silver bean counters jumped over to insta like if you guys are over on insta him and the whole silver porn community it is insane what those guys do over there as far as transacting business you want to talk about auctions i i don't know how they do that i haven't figured out it's probably easier right you just take a picture post it up and then boom it's sold but um I haven't ventured off into that. I don't spend a lot of time on inside just like the YouTube, but it is much more time consuming with the video. Streaming has been cool, but yeah, getting to a thousand would be a big deal. I could put the, the super chat in there, I guess. You can you can monetize and do all different things, right? With a thousand, I don't even really know what I'm in for. <laughs> at a thousand. All right, we're going once on this. We've got, uh, we got Sharp Eye for Coins at 43. We're looking for 44. We're going twice. I'm going to start counting it down. Ed, if you're thinking about it, anybody else, get your bids in there. Otherwise, once you hear me typing, it's probably too late. All right, guys? With latency and delay, by the time you hear my keyboard, you probably can't get a bid anymore. You want to see that buckle? I'm, I'm pumped, man. I'm glad. I, 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 it's lower on the list, but not too far down. I'll get to it. All in, all done. Last call, fair warning. We're at 43 on the 41, and... Well, sold. Congratulations, Joe. Star Joe Sharp. I keep saying I, I keep saying Joe because you're your old handle, and I know you changed your name on purpose, so it's kind of funny that I do that. Apologies to you. Um. All right, guys. I am going to, and then everybody in the chat's also like, "Hey, congrats, Joe." I mean, everybody knows you, right? So it's kind of like <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. All right, Joe, putting this one back in the uh, in the holder here, off to the side. And then the next one is a 59 proof set. Starting bid is also 35. It also is in the capital holder. It's got the plastic. And then you've got your coins. Your mirror finish. I don't really see any cameo on any, but they are all proofs. Right out of the government packaging. In fact, there's the seal for the Philadelphia Mint that they put in the proof sets. If you see that Philly Mint, that is not a mint set. That's a proof set. The way they did these silver, what is it? 
Octagon. Uh, I can't tell. It's Hex or Oct. I think it's Oct. No, it's Hex. And so these are just out of the mint cello, but the mint was cello was falling apart, so it has been protected by being placed in this capital holder. And when I did that, I put the mint seal in there to go with it. I think it looks cool like that. Ed opens this up at 35. This is a 59 cent set, guys. So the 50, 59 sets and 58 sets are um, a lot of times sell at a premium to other sets in the run. Uh, even sometimes 57 will go for cheaper than a 58 and 59s. Just don't know. I, I got to look at the scarcity numbers on them. Um, but it's a beautiful set. All flawless coins. All high high PF grade. Uh, I don't. I don't think. There's much you can find wrong with the fields or devices on these, uh, other than that they're just all mirrored up. Silver haired seeker, great to see you. Ed's in the lead at 35. We're looking for 36, guys. And do a P silver bean counter. I'll start moving the auction on so we can get ourselves to the belt buckle, which where is it? I don't even know where I put it, which number. Book, not a boon. Uh, dang, I don't see. Did I skip over it? Where is that thing? Oh, it's item 17. Okay, I got some work to get to it. We only, we're, we're more than halfway there, Silver Bean Counter. All right, so the 1959 set at 35. I'm okay moving on, on with this one, guys. So if you're interested, Oh, that's your first capital holder set. That's awesome. This is a beautiful one to have it in. The 59 set is gorgeous, and these are all beautiful mirrored finish. Uh, again, the, the the cellophane that these came in was falling apart, and I didn't want the co coins falling out and being damaged, so this was put in here by me. So these are right out of the mint cello, just to let you know, Ed. They're, they're minty fresh, and all the coins were nice. They didn't have any toning spots or anything on them when I took them out of there, so they went in the capital holder, sealed up, and placed for sale. And we're going once, we're going twice. If you want to bid, Henry Von Mega, what is going on, my friend? <laughs> Great to see you. You made it. I'm so glad. I hope you got a notification, but if not, you found out about it one way or another, so that's good. All right, so it's last call and fair warning on the 1959 proof set. This is a 1959 proof set. We're at $35, and we are looking for $36. No other bids. We're going to start typing, and if you hear the keyboard, you're probably too late. You probably have my fingerprint on there indeed. Yep, you probably do. And it's yours, my friend. That thing is sold, sold, sold. Congratulations, and that is great, Ed, to have your first capital holder set, and it comes in the plastic like that, all sealed up nicely. I'll make sure I send you that one and not the 41 that Joe bought. <laughs> that would be a common mistake since both holders are the same. All right, uh, let's see here. What do we got next on the block? Oh, we're at the, we're at the uh, grab bag special, guys. So just let me fill you in. You heard me talking about it earlier. I do grab bags. This is not, uh, this is not the item I make money on in my auctions, so. Um, what I do, yes, sir, congratulations, thank you. Um, what I do on the grab bags is I put, if you're into collecting coins, I will put collectible coins in there. So you may get retail value because obviously the melt value of a penny is actually probably worth more than the face value. But a lot of times, you know, if you're looking at a 31S, I mean, that thing is, you know, getting up there. If it's in any kind of condition, it's probably a $75 or $100 coin by itself, right? So it's not that I'm going to put a 31S in your bag, but... I just want to explain how it works for me is I put together a package based on knowing what you like. I watch your channel. Uh, if you're a silver stacker, you're going to get silver. It's, it, it's a way to guarantee yourself that you're going to get silver at melt value. I will give you junk silver or bullion. I'll put different things in there. And I always aim to please. A lot of times I lose money on my grab bags because it's a way for me to get back to the community. I enjoy watching videos of people opening up stuff that I kind of put some thought into. Um, 
So I'm going to open them up here. If anybody wants one, you just type bin, B-I-N, in the chat. And I guarantee it. Like you said, if you don't like it, you send me back everything I sent you and I'll refund your money. But I've never had anybody have a problem. Uh, in fact, people have said there's stuff that they got from me that's in their perma stack uh, or their perma collection that they never would have got otherwise. Um, I've got, I don't know where Kellen is. He was in here earlier. I sent him a grab bag last week. Can't wait till he gets it on Monday because uh, he had a four real coin in there. And he has actually collected an entire series of quarter real, half real, one real, two real, four real, eight real, and also Cobb from me, uh, from grab bags over time. And so the guy's literally put together his whole collection. <laughs> I know. Well, that'd be interesting, right? It's been since 43 that we had a, that we had a steel scent. So that would be interesting if they don't just do away with it all together, Edward, uh, like Canada did. And if you guys aren't into the grab bags this week, I'm totally fine with that because again, it's not like a money maker for me. It's a way I do take the money and turn it over. So it's a way that I get a lot of new stuff every week you know, for my auction is I'll take the money that comes in on grab bags, I'll reinvest it. But I just go through stuff that I bought and try to make right, uh, you know, people's purchase for them. So, um, yeah, so that's what you see. And if you like certain things like graded coins, you're looking for, you know, I don't know, you're looking for a full bell line Benji and you're like, dude, I would love to have one of those in my collection, but you know, they're pricey. Let me know, you know, send me an email of that. Um, I will put that and yeah, no problem. And look, if you guys want a grab bag and you get to the end of the auction and you're like, all right, I'm within budget. I saved my dry powder to fire away at some of these later items, but you've got a hundred left over that you want to grab bag. Just let me know at the end or send me an email and that's fine. So that's totally fine. Magnet fishing is easier with grab bags, yes. And if you want a magnet in your grab bag, I've got a huge magnet I'll send you. I've got speaker magnets if you need them. Um, every time I switch out a system, I take the speakers and I rip the magnets out of them. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to close it down. Anybody want a grab bag? If not, no problem. I'm going to leave it blank for now. We can come back to it later. If you do want one, just type bin or 100 in the chat. Uh, let's see here. And that'll bring us up to the giveaway. All right, Zafael wants times two. You got it, Zafael. A repeat, a repeat customer, and you got it, my friend. You know I'll, I'll take care of it. Understood, understood. Being count. Hey, man, it's always timing, right? And I, I will make sure that you get your dollars worth. That's the thing. So. I love it. I love it. Love it. Rat stack. Good to see you, brother. There's the poor extraordinaire, dude. Hope you are enjoying some Aloha right now and Shaka to you, my brother. You seen that uh, video I posted up? That is Rat Stack's poor. If you guys don't know the Rat Stack guys, go check out that channel. Guy pours some awesome silver pieces. You guys gotta buy some of that stuff from him or do a trade or whatever you can work out. Um, all right, so Zafael was times two. And I just want to make sure I, I didn't miss anything. All right, cool. Bin two, we all good, we all good. All right, so this is the new Value Hunter sticker from Empyrean Label. Guys, if you don't know Empyrean Label too, and you're looking for some channel artwork, um, really good, friendly member of the community that does awesome, awesome art and graphics. Did the thumbnail for this auction, did this sticker, and is also a coin collector and silver stacker. So part of the community on in numerous ways. Just a really good guy. So what I'm going to do, 
Uh, glad you liked it, Radstack. I love my poor man. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> got to shout you out with that action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write on the back of this sticker a number. Uh, let's see, we got 24 in the chat right now. So I'm going to make it a number between 1 and 30. And it's going to be the first person to guess the number or close to it without going over by the time I say stop, right? And you wait until I wait until I type go in the chat, guys. Don't jump the gun. Wait until I type go. And what I will do is if you are the number on the nose or closest to it without going over, you're going to get that as well as, let me show you what else, what else I've got here. Um, here, I think I got it on another camera. Let me show you guys. Um, no, I'm just going to pull it out. So this is an 06S quarter that I found. And I think it's silver, but it might be clad. There's no cameo on this. So the proof is usually a cameo. It might be platinum plated. Or it could be the business strike, but it looks proofy to me. And it doesn't have any clad markings on the end, on the edge. It's like silver, and it's the silver weight. So it's really, it's almost like an oddball. It's like a cameo, or it's like a non-cameo silver quarter. And that's the North Dakota 06 state, statehood. So I'm going to do that just as a quick giveaway midstream here. All right. And closest to the number without going over. Scrapping, hoarding, tinkering, fun, dude. I'm putting your package together. It's taking me a little time, obviously, of what's going on. And and stop. And the reason for that, as you know, scrapping, is because of what's going into it, my friend. <laughs> all right, guys. So I got a little bit of drama. I know I'll avoid it because my boy Roger S. is an amazing guy. So he won't he won't let it be drum dramatic. But the number was 27. Roger, you jumped the gun just a tad, man. I was looking at Bean Counter jump in there at 26 before I said go, too. And I was like, gosh, I said wait till I say go. So it's like I got to <laughs> um, – Anyway, so, and that's okay. If you guys pick a number early and then I say go, you can always throw another one in there, but just guess once after the, after the go. And then when I hit stop, it's the closest without going over. So the same thing happened with Roger too. He picked 27, but then down low, uh, below, below where I said go, I had Brando show that, that showed up for, for, with the answer. So this, this 06 North Dakota is going to Brando show. All right, because of that. And I will throw a sticker in your package as well. <laughs> Not the quarter, Roger, but I'll, th I'll throw an extra sticker in there for you, man. Uh, because you were you were on it, you were just a little early. So you jumped the gun, my friend, and I know you didn't mean anything or maybe didn't even hear my description clearly with the way I was talking through it. But congrats to Brando Show, the North Dakota possible silver I, I got it i mean it magnet tests and everything it's just not it doesn't have a cameo which is weird for an 06 right like all of the quarters out of the mint in the silver set there it, it is an s quarter too so either way it's got value because i'll tell you something brando um if you look at your uh if you look at the numbers on the quarters for 06 all right i'm just going to tell you something about this quarter real quick okay and it says silver on there I don't know that th that is silver so just you know be aware it's not I'm not trying to give you any misleading advertisement but I'm gonna flip through and give you the numbers on the 06 so if this is a 2006 s North Dakota silver uh, it's 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 still it's like 2.8 like which is if it's not silver so it's a low mintage number and it's and it's weird because it's it it's not like a proof now do they have they didn't even have the s business strike so it has to be either it was a proof that was dipped and so it's not on the edge or 
it's silver, and that's why when you look at the edge, you don't see any clad lines. So it could be a silver coin. It's just oddball with no cameo. I don't know. Low mintage in any case. Cool win. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, i got to write you down so I don't forget who that goes to. Should be hard to remember. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, guys. Uh, I got the S and D. Thanks, everybody, for giving it a shot. It's I see a U.S. Silver Stacker and and VC and a bunch of other guys in here. All right. Some people have been chatting. All right. Yes. Thank you for the compliment, Hidden. <laughs> Clint S., what is up, brother? Yes, dude. Doing great. Missed you, too, my friend. I... Clinton, I actually have something for you, but I'm not even going to say anything about it because I think I'm just going to surprise you with a package. But I do want you to know when something is coming your way, but I'm not going to show it to you ahead of time. But I saw something, and I had to get it because it made me think of you. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. All right, guys. The next up is the 82 Silver... Proof and BU commemoratives, the first ones that the Mint made in 90% since the 64 Kennedys. And they come in a box that looks like this. Yeah, I, you know what? I like Clash too. It's just, you know, he does so much stuff, man. He's out lawn, you know, uh, lawn sale hunting or yard sale hunting or whatever, and he's you know, I mean, he's making guitars and he's gold panning and he's great, I mean, great channel. Love, love Shane, right? Great guy. Um, but the reason I was saying that California gold process, it's like all that that guy does. It's, it, it's uh, Prospector Jerry is his name. And he's just, he's a blast to watch, man. Clutch is also up there. I, lo I love watching him too. Really tell He does coin roll hunting. He does all kinds of stuff actually. So these are in this kind of packaging, it's a little box, it's in a cello, and then it's got your COA behind it. It tells you that it's 0.4 Troy silver content. That's the BU, beautiful. And then this one in the red box is the proof. So that's the Denver, this is the San Fran. We're looking for an opening bid of 25 bucks. Black and white, look at that thing. And then this one has like a desk stand. So if you pull it out of here, it actually will stand up on a desk. But you can see through also the back side of the coin with Washington's birthplace. It was to commemorate the 250, uh, 250th anniversary of his birth, George Washington's birth. So that's why they came out with this in 82. Dan Hurd, I don't know. I'm going to have to check out Dan Hurd, but I appreciated it. You send me an email and remind me that, or I'll look back at the chat and, and remember, um, because that that would, if it's, if you say it's good, man, it's the same kind of thing. It's, I enjoy watching gold prospecting in, in kind of my downtime. When I jump on, on YouTube, you know, I'm always like, what am I going to watch? And I try to connect with all the channels, you know, that, that like I follow. I got like a thousand channels I follow, right? A lot of friends, this, you know, everybody that's subscribed to me plus, plus then some, right? So, um, you know, watch videos, catch one a month maybe from you know, channels I've known for a long time. And then I'll just like, while I'm crashing out, I'll watch it on TV. And, uh, you know, I don't comment a lot because of that. I'll watch stuff on TV, on YouTube when I'm, when I'm actually consuming content. And so instead of picking up my phone or being on my computer where I can text or chat back, I'll just hit the thumbs up and there's no place to comment on my TV, you know? So then what I'll do is I'll just watch and that prospecting thing, man, that guy, it's like just relaxing, <laughs> put you to sleep. Not really because it's boring, just because it's like enjoyable, you know, one of those. You need a bow. I love it. That would be cool. It didn't look like it was that long when I saw your face, man, Mountain Link. But it could be. You had it under a hat at the time, so. Who did? Scrapping. Von Mega did a shout out for me. So we had Roger S. open us up at 25. Thank you, Roger. And JW answers back at 26. Sorry if I'm chatting and not keeping things going. I'll try to stay on point. Silver Bean Counter is in the house trying to get to a, a Sterling Silver and .925, almost 4-ounce belt buckle. It's actually over 4-ounce, but I do the ac actual silver weight, and it's about 3.9. Roger S. answers right back with 28, looking for 29. Hi-Ho Silver in the house helping with the count. Scrapping hoarding. 
and and RN Stacker and Clinton S and him and and Hidden Numismatist all keeping everybody on on their toes as the mods in the house tonight. Thank you guys. Man Mountain Link chatting it up, talking about George Washington and his ponytail. The original ponytail rocker, the original top knot, George Washington with the top knot. <laughs> Have you guys ever watched those stop the knot videos? <laughs> it's the if you're in for if you want to laugh, listen to this, Man Mountain Link. Go check out on YouTube and hit stop the knot. Okay? Go to stop the knot. It is these kids where like, you know, everybody gone to the shaved head style where the side of the head shaved and then they got the long ponytail, but they wear it up a little bit high. So it's like a man bun, right? And these guys, these Australian kids are like running around. These kids will be outside drinking coffee or whatever. And they come over and literally have a pair of scissors and like cut these people's hair off and then run, run back into their car and drive off. It's, I mean, it's kind of like bothersome because it's, you know, like you, you get seriously hurt for doing that stuff around these parts, but, uh, <laughs> It's kind of the reactions are amazing, you know. You got like this entire generation just gobstopped that they, uh, you know, just had their pony, their top man bun cut off. It's kind of hilarious. Shouldn't have our identity wrapped up in our hairdo, right? I mean, come on, what's wrong with this world? The red ones are beautiful. Yes, they both are. I mean, you know, the thing about it, it's just a different finish, right? Like, it's like, that's the BU. It's like a matte finish. It has the cartwheel. Also a beautiful, beautiful coin. More of what you would typically see in like a circulated coin, circulation coin, right? But these are the only two that are, are like this, that are these. We're at 28, looking for 29, going once. Yeah, Joe. What hair is right? Well, you know, look, if it doesn't grow on top, you know, you can always just grow the sides out, right? And then get a big sledgehammer and some watermelons and make a career out of it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've had some buddies that have actually done that. They thought that was the style back in the day, man. It was the no hair on top ponytail. And then they always wear a hat, you know? And it was like, okay, well, you know, I see your ponytail, but you're trying to fake us out because I know there's nothing under there. All right, going twice, going twice. We got Roger S. at 28, looking for 29. Two times. J-Dub thinking about it, looking for 29. Zafael answers back at 29, looking for 30. We got the 1732 to 82, to 1982, 250 years, silver, 90%. Both coins are 90% silver. We are at 29, looking for 30. Roger comes back at 30. Looking for 31. We're at 30, looking for 31. Be sure you guys are on live chat. Uh, just go up to the top next to the three buttons, and you will see where it says live chat or top chat. Make sure it says live chat and click those buttons and hit that. Zafael answers back at 31, looking for 32. Roger answers back, jumps the bid to 33, a protective bid at 33. We're at 33, looking for 34. Roger's in the lead at 33, going once. Safael's thinking about it. JW is still thinking about it. Looking for 34. Roger in the lead. Out. He apologizes for driving Roger up. That's not a problem. We're all friends here, Zafael. You were trying to win these coins. Roger in the lead at 33, going twice. Twice with a bid of 33 degree, trying to take it down. The Master Mason bid at 33. Looking for 34. All in, all done. I'm gonna get fair warning, Jay. Uh, you're the only one I didn't hear from and it's okay. I know when you go quiet, it usually means you've bowed. Uh, but I always wanna make sure somebody didn't disconnect if they wanted to be in the bid. All in, all done, fair warning. Uh, Right when I said fair warning, you asked me that. We're on item 12, Henry. Ed, I'm assuming that's not a bid, so I just want to give you a second. Uh, just retract that comment if that's not a bid. If it is a bid, let me know before I close it. Uh, if you, It is a good deal for you, but if, you, if that is a bid on your behalf, I don't want to pass you by and say it. 
drop the hammer if that was a bid. So just let me know, Ed. That's why people always make a big deal about numbers in the chat stuff. It gets a little confusing, but I don't really get uptight about it. I just usually pause, ask, and then we move on, right? Instead of being uh, like some sort of Gestapo with uh, with numbers in the chat. So Ed, is that a forty dollar bid on your behalf? You said it's a good deal at forty. You got the number in there. I don't want. Okay, you retracted. Understood. All right. So that was it. We're calling it down. It's sold. We're 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 clearing the air here. We've got. We've got Roger S. with 33 winning bid. Congratulations, Roger S. Beautiful coins, my friend. 90% silver to boot, right? So you know that you've always got your value because you've got numismatic quality value and uh, uh, condition value and things like that, original government packaging value. But you've got your, your intrinsic value, right? So here you go. These are headed your way, Roger. Congratulations. All right, next on the board, Joe, this is one you, you put up, one of these. I, I, I think it went for 175, so we'll see. I started it below that at 150. Um, this is a West Point Mint ASE. They're about 20 bucks, uh, 20, 30 bucks more than this, up to about 200 bucks total on eBay. And Actually, yeah, I think 169. This is the West Point Mint. Let me make sure I have the right one here. Where'd it go? All right. Take it out of the bag. This is the West Point Mint Perfect PR70 Decam. Silver Ego, Silver Eagle, Ego, <laughs> with edge lettering. So inside on the edge of this coin, I think it may be the only Silver Eagle that has lettering on the edge or that's edge lettered, but it is in a PCGS holder, graded. Yeah, uh, is that, yeah, Joe, I know that's not a bid, right? You're not bidding on that. You're saying it's online. I know you already have one of these um, and, you, and you sold one. You had two, I think, right? So, they're, I think they're one sixty nine on on eBay. Buy it now is the lowest I've seen, and sale price one sixty nine on closing. Uh, yeah, so these are the proof two thousand sixteens that were released in seventeen, but these are the West Point Mint hoard that they released because of COVID in twenty twenty, uh, because the mint was shut down. So it's got the it's got the leg, yeah, silver ego. That's right, that's right, baby. That you know the silver ego, man. What what that equates to? That's called a full stack video. <laughs> you guys do full stack videos out there. They got silver ego going on. So we'll look for a one hundred and fifty opening bid to start. And I know I know I know somebody in here paid one hundred and seventy five for one of these. I was thinking that might be a good range for them, but. It is the 30th anniversary, right? It's the only and it's the only one and the first, and it will be the last because the design changes this year. So I don't know what the mintage is, um, but it is. Yes, I'm sorry. Did I say 1916? That is right. It is not 1916. My correction. Let me let me correct that. That file. Thank you. That that would be helpful. 1916. A 1916 American Silver Eagle would be quite collectible, wouldn't it? Especially if it was a W and in PR70. <laughs> I'll be like a walking liquor, liberty. All right. So I'll retract my earlier description. And we'll stick with that one. West Point Mint 2016. Released in 2020. That's what the little 2020 is next to it. So these, these were a hoard that were held at the West Point Mint and then released at a later date. It is a perfect grade PR70 deep cameo. I am glad to put this on eBay at $164.99, five bucks below the next uh, highest seller or the, ne the, the next lowest seller on eBay. Or you can get one for 15 bucks below that right now. <laughs> That's three records, huh? I know, right? 
just means it might be something valuable errors when they switch over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and anything that you see that looks like a little something is going to be on the lens. I, I don't want to rub it too much. I don't want to scrap, scratch it up or create haze. But the coin is graded perfect, so you know what, what any any spot or anything you see is pretty much always going to be on the lens or the, you know, from a fingerprint on the, on the plastic or something like that. This is a PCGS premier grading company in the world, really. All right, guys. Uh, any interest at 150 on the 2016 W? You know what? I can barely see the edge, and I don't think I can get it visible. Uh, in the camera so I'm gonna answer that and say no but it, it I, what I can tell you about it is that it is um, let me see it's like etched or maybe it's stamped you know or like something but yeah I can't see what it says it's at the bottom of the coin below the um, below the date and then it's also at the top of the coin above E but I can't you can, there's no way to see it because of the way the holders are looking for 150 to open guys and if not we will start moving mr. silver bean counter towards his belt buckle I don't have any cowboy boots to go with it but it is pretty Pretty darn BA belt buckle, man. I gotta tell you, thing is sweet and it's big. I mean, it's not as big as like a rodeo belt, you know, belt buckle, but it is it is good size. I mean, it's a lot. It's a chunk of silver, man. And you know, they're always talking about how I mean, silver bean counter, dude. I've heard your videos where we've talked about like jewelry and the way that like you know Indians stack, right? Like people from other country because they will wear their like the majority of their net worth around their neck or at least be able to. So if they need to bounce and get out of Dodge, they can do so. And, you know, those of us in the U.S., we stack and we put a lot of wealth to work. But, you know, it's not like we're taking the highest, you know, value precious metal and getting it in jewel, jewelry type stuff so we can easily get it on a plane with or something like that. I mean, you, we take all these coins or all this bulk metal. I mean, we'd be hard pressed to be able to go to Argenti Argentina with that without, you know, disclosures and disclaimers but you know you put on some jewelry you can easily do that a belt buckle is kind of a unique way to carry a big chunk of silver around with you without having to disclose you know it's, it's clothing it's kind of cool hey roger thank you appreciate it i do have your email no problem at all I'll send you an invoice tonight a million like a million dollar check well someday clinton my hope is that a million dollar check will not bounce for you my friend I would like to see you write, a, be able to write a check like that without it bouncing. Be, be concerned that it wouldn't bounce. So much love and respect to you too, man. And all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say going once. If anybody's interested at 150, awesome. And if not, we'll pull it down. And I will throw it on eBay. I think that's my solution, right? It's like throw it up there. They're selling on eBay. They're selling well. I mean, there are multiple of them selling. It's just that's the price range for them. We don't have collectors for, you know, the rarer ASEs in here. So going twice. <coughs> not really rarer. Rarer is not the right word. It's like scarcer, I think. And probably because of grade, right? So it's quality scarcity. And all in, all done. If there's no interest... If there's interest, let me know. I'll throw 150 in the chat, and if it's not, then I'm I re I gotta retype because I said sold, but it's not. It's closed, <laughs> and that's okay. Closed. All right, guys, no problem at all. We will eBay this one. That is what we will do. Next up on the block, we've got some silver coming up now, guys. Zero bid there, and no bid. All right. So, we got the reverse proof set with the 68 set. Edward, if you would like me to, I am happy to invoice you later. 
uh, and put it aside for you. I know everybody wants me to put it up next week. I'll tell you what. Um, uh, boy. Yeah, I'll send you guys both an email. We'll, we'll figure something out. For now, starting bid on it. That's a start, guys, by the way. <laughs> I get it now, Motley. Dude, his bells are epic, aren't they? If you guys don't know Joe Durbin, go check him out. Joe Durbin and his wife, Diane, also do auctions very similar to what I do on here every week. They do a few of them. He's got, um, un unlike me, with a very limited supply, he has an endless supply of coins. Um, and the reason that Joe Durbin has an endless supply of coins is because he has his own mint. It's called the Durbin Mint. And so, um, so this is the reverse proof set. This is a special set. Uh, I'm gonna move some things around to get at it, actually. All right. And I did say a 68 set, so there will be a 68 set as well with this. Yeah, his, and he, he makes bells and they're awesome. So this is a night, it is a, um, it says 2017, but it is a 2018, is a 50 year anniversary, 68 to 18. Reverse proof set, 50th anniversary. Again, trying to start this well below. And because it's a 68, I threw a, a 68 proof set in with it, which I have to go grab, I have it in the other room. But I wanna throw this up, we'll let the bidding begin on the proof set. You guys wanna price these out too. I'm trying to start everything you know, at least 10% below where you would see it uh, retail, you know, selling on eBay, that kind of thing. 2018 San Francisco Mint Silver Proof, uh, Reverse Proof Set. And then here's the COA for that. Tells you about the coins. And it's got two lenses, and you can see what these look like. Thanks, Hi Ho. Appreciate it. There's the 2018 Reverse Proof. Look at that scent. I, mean, I believe it was a first for a couple of these coins to be in reverse proof. Uh, and certainly for the quarters, this was the ATBs. And in 2018, we had these different ATB quarters in a reverse proof. This is also silver. Again, this is one of those things that goes for a lot more on eBay. I thought about putting it in my eBay store. I've just held on to them. I thought, well, before I do that, I'll test the waters here and see if there's any interest. I'm going to go get the 68 set to show you guys. Hey, Quad Man, a.k.a. Quad Stacker. Good to see you. Poured silver. I don't have poured silver tonight, Quad Man. I don't, but I do have silver. I have quite a bit of silver. Starting with this set, I think everything almost from here on out. There's a link in the description down below that will bring you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, everything from here on out is silver, except for the last item. Yeah, the, this is a beautiful set, and I'm going to throw in a 68 set with this. So you're, you're talking about, you know, on the 68 sets, I mean, you know, what, 10 or $15, somewhere in that range retail value. So if you price these out, and then you look at the price of a 68 set, and you start to figure out, like, where we are from a pricing standpoint, it's a smoking deal I think you will find. At least great if it's an opening bid and it holds up, right? Which is what I'm always looking to do, is find things that nobody's got interest in, and I get a low starting bid, and then boom, <laughs> take it home. Yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of poor stuff. I've maybe put one or two poor items up. I have some friends that are in the poor community that I've been talking with about... Um, Yes, and do you want me to grab the 68? I need to grab the 68. There's the lens on that. And let me try to get a, a better angle on it. There's about the best image I can get. And also, I'll reduce that light. If I get rid of the reflection, maybe it helps.
Yeah, and then Red also has a Ford Silver next week on at 5.30. I'm going to run my auction early, and it'll be a short list. Guys, I'll probably only do five to ten items next week. Grab bags, maybe five other items or something like that. So... There you go, guys. There you go, Hidden. Anything more that you that you want me to zoom on in particular? Yeah, and Redneck and his crew, all the or RN Stacker and his crew, all these guys do great poured silver work. Art artists, one and all. And yeah, and, and so like you know, Sterling Cannabis pours. He was in here earlier. Uh, you know, there's uh, um, Stacking AG forty seven, who's a friend of of the channel and um, supported Dean's auction in a big way. I've been talking to him. There's a couple of people that do stuff that I was like, hey, you know, getting a piece here and there to be able to put up um, would be great. Um, I would do ninety. I would I would drop ten off for the sixty eight set if you just want the, the reverse hidden if we got no other takers I think that's well I think it's 25 bucks lower than the lowest sale I've seen on on eBay but you you can correct me if I'm wrong hey uh, You've got a package with me already too, Hidden, so there wouldn't be any additional shipping. Uh, so that's something to consider as well. Okay. All right, bin, bin at 90, you got it. Take it down. Let me see if I've got a bag to hold it to. I think I do. I don't know if my mint set bags are big enough for one of the boxes. Yeah, I, probably not. I'm going to have to get a bigger bag for that. We're going to need a bigger bag. All right. I will get that safely packaged. And you got some other stuff too hidden. So if you want to hold, we can hold. If you want to ship, we can ship. Um, and I'm just going to make a note. Congratulations, hidden. That's a beautiful set, my friend. All right, this next one is a travesty. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to I'm going to start this one. I had somebody make me an offer on this set last night and it was it was just a little bit lower than what I think, you know, with packaging and everything it's worth. The reason I'm going to bring this up, this is a um, this is a 55 set, guys, in the original government packaging it is a 55 proof set but it's been removed from like a capital holder or a Whitman holder or a book page or something like that because there's toning you can see the book toning on the dime and it's like they tried to get it off of the half and they dipped it and because of that it lost its luster so it's a beautiful 55 set I'm gonna say I'm just gonna do a I'm gonna do a bin because I don't feel comfortable with less but I don't feel comfortable with more so I'm just going to say it's 75 bin, but I need, before you put a bin in there, I want to get to the half guys. So the, the scent is absolutely breathtaking. And same thing with the nickel. It's gorgeous. The dime you can see has book toning like it was, well, it could be some, it could be packaging toning. And the same thing with the, um, with the quarter, right? Down near the number, it looks like a little bit of book toning near the edge. But what happened was somebody, somebody dipped, <laughs> Somebody dipped the, the, the half, and because of that, it lost its luster. Now, you could maybe get restoration at NGC or PCGS to correct that and, and get, I don't know, get rid of that. But I think once it's been dipped to the point where it's like they leave, if you dip it a couple times, they end up losing their luster and they get dull like that, especially proof coins. You don't ever want to dip a proof coin because that's what it looks like when you do it. You see the difference? Look at the quarter, look at the half, but it is a proof half. It's just, anyway, a buyer. Okay. Oh, Joe, I see, I see you're in there. So I'm okay with that, Joe, even before I got to the half with you, because you saw this, I think you saw this set last night. 
Um, yeah, and I did get an offer, and it was like, man, it was just a little low for me. So I feel good about the buy it now because at least, you know, you've got, you know what you're buying. All right, sold at 75 to Joe. Uh, yeah, I, I knew that was going to happen with if it was somebody that was there last night because they know what they're getting, you know what I mean? But I just, for everybody else in the stream, I wanted them to have a chance before they bid, um, you know, so I, I feel like, I mean, like it's going to the right home because you had the chance to review that from last night. And it was like, I got offered 50 bucks for it last night. I was like, dude, that's just not, um, you know, fair market on that set. Even if I pulled the half out and sold the set with the box, it's probably, it's probably 50 bucks without the half. So it's like, if you, you want it and I keep the half, then sure. Right. But <laughs> that wouldn't have been fair either. So, uh, all right, Joe, I got you down. Thank you. All right. Next up. Yeah, I know. I hate it too. I hate seeing, I hate seeing damaged coins. Um, you know, it's like people try to do things on their own instead of sending, um, you know, or do things with their coins that creates damage, right? And then try to fix it or whatever. But instead, you know, the, the conservation uh, does work. You know, if you send stuff in. So before you dip a coin or try to clean something, always if if it's you know, unless it's just a melt value type coin, and you know, you see guys like Yankee stacking out there that. You know, he shows you how to clean your coins. John Nelson, no need. All you got to do is send me an email. And uh, welcome, to the, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat. So, um, and welcome to the stream. Yeah, we're just auctioning some items, mostly silver up to the end. This next one, guys, if you were here earlier and you were watching the books that uh, I know Brando was here. Uh, he had to leave. I don't know if he's back now. But this was... I mentioned another kind of book, and that's what this is. This is the Whitman, it's called the Whitman Classic. So the bookshelf books were the last ones that we did, and this one is called the Whitman Classic. And the reason is it's much more like a Dansko style album. So I'm going to move my camera, try not to make you guys seasick by doing that. But it tells you, you gotta adjust, tells you about the coins on the opening page. These are Walking Liberty half dollars they are 90% silver coins each and every one and there are a few semi key dates in this book uh, a couple I should say so one of them being the 17 that usually sells at a premium in this particular case the coin has a really clear date and I even when I focus this camera you're not going to be able to see it I don't think but there is some graffiti type of scratches over in the odd verse above the motto but really good date strike. So, I mean, it's a good example for a, for an early collection. And then the 18S, which I would also call, it, which is not as clear of a date, but is a semi-key for, you know, from a date standpoint. So this book is brand new. It came out of, uh, you know, came out of plastic like yesterday is, is kind of how it appears or looks. Um, and then you've got, I'm just going to kind of go through the dates. And I'm going to turn this light on so you guys can see these from a distance, maybe. All right. Uh, let me grab my white paper. Again, these pages are in good condition. There we go. Okay. So you got the two coins on the front page. And then these are the other dates, guys. There's a 20 and a 20S. These are all circulated. As they get into the later dates, they get better quality wise. There's a 27S, 28S, 29D, 29S. And then the 33S, 34, 34O, 34S. Uh, just to let you guys know where we are, I'm starting bidding on this below the melt value of the coins. And let's see. I, let me let me just double check melt for you guys. I I, I didn't write it down, but I know uh, if we go to coinflation.com, go to coin calculator and silver melt, and go to I don't know what silver's doing right now too. The market's probably just open, and it is thirty one walking liberty halves. Yeah, it's down a little bit. 
274 is melt. So it, it's actually a little bit above that with the book, which is brand new. It's 10 bucks for the book plus melt value. And you've got some sem semi key dates here. So anyway, uh, I think a good place to start. That's how I came about it. I think it was at melt earlier uh, when before we shaved 30 or 40 cents off the <laughs> silver value. Um, okay, so 29 DNS, 33 S, 34, 34 D, 34 S. And then this page is almost full except for the 38D, which is a key, or semi-key. 35, 35D, 35 35S, 35 36, 360, 36S, the 37 run, the 38, the 39. The 39DNS, 42S, 43, and 3D. And then the, uh, let's see, 44, 44S, and 46S. And then it still has all of like the inserts. So it's got your information about it, which is kind of nice. And it says Whitman Classic Coin Collecting Album. So these are like Dansko's, guys, but you know, similar in quality and archival. This is the Whitman version of the Dansko, okay? And if you're looking for a, a way to build a collection without having to pay the arm and the leg for Dansko's, this is a great way to do it. They have the two ring. You see, it's the same way that it's put together. Here's all the inserts and information. My personal address is on there. You can come visit me after you open this up. I'm just kidding. All right, so that is the book. I'm putting the camera back down before I accidentally give an inadvertent base reveal. All right, guys, so we've got Joe at 285. Zaphiel answers back at 290. Joe answers back at 295. We're at 295 looking for three hundo. Two ninety five. There is it is peeling up a little bit here from pulling the thing out. So that you know, this is what happens. This thing comes up a little bit. You can tell from pulling the plastic insert in or out to put a coin in. So it's kind of you know, same thing happens to the dance because you know how they are on the edges, guys. But um, yeah, Silver Shield man, his artwork. The, the the U.S. Mint needs to hire his uh, engraver. I mean, like <laughs> that dude's work. His stuff is is really cool. Yeah, it's funny because I really like some of the themes on his stuff. You know, I came in late to the game on any of his collections, so it's kind of like you know I'm not gonna go back and pay thousands of dollars for an ounce of silver because of you know. But but they they are cool. His one offs. I mean, you know, his limited runs. Um, Silver Shield stuff is pretty cool. Uh, so sharp eyes in the lead at 295 looking for 300 yeah I mean you know you think the US Mint would put a shoulder tattoo on a girl <laughs> never yeah you gotta know that that's telling a little bit of a story right you see a shoulder tattoo you know there's a little bit something more going on with that girl you know little something more than meets the eye All right, we got 295 looking for 300. Zaphael's thinking about it at 300. I think the books are 20 to 30. I don't know for sure on retail value. Um, you know, I get them at dealer cost, so they're like in the 10 to 15 range, I think, for me, um, you know, on, on these kind of things. So I don't ever know where to add or take away on pricing from a, a, a set. But um, yeah, anyway. Certainly, you've got your silver value. Magnum Force 99. Oh my gosh. I know, right? They don't know. The LCS doesn't know the Silver Shield. And it's dinged up a little bit, but who cares? I actually don't own one single Silver Shield item. I, I would love to. I don't know what my first will be. I would love to get one uh, or multiple, but I just, you know, I haven't wanted to pay a premium and I can't build a collection. And I'm a, I'm a completionist, so I have a hard time with, you know, trying to get into a series where I can only get halfway there. That's like for me. That caused me to walk away. Silver Bean Counter has pushed me as far as I'll go. Like, you know, and, and I've learned how to pick up like potential first 
things from him, from watching his channel and announcements and stuff. So the the triangle coin from the Perth Mint, I, the, I bought those. I'm on that series. Uh, I think they're unique and cool. Um, I did the Queen's Beast series, which was pretty cool. But I got in early. I only missed one when I started. And so therefore, actually, I might have even got the first one. I think I had missed one, but I was able to go back and get it for a relatively affordable amount. Um, and maybe it was the Griffin that I was missing. and I, So I had to pay up a little bit, you know, but it was still, I mean, you're talking about, I don't know, tens of dollars, not hundreds, right? Now, I did also follow Silver Bean Counter into the um, Chiwu Chan Wing. And I, I, went, I had to go back and buy the first year on that one. And that was biting the bullet a little bit. But I was able to get the rest of the collection relatively affordably. So, uh, what else am I? I bought the series, the Dragon series from Provident, um, in copper and silver. Uh, now, if you guys don't know the Queen's Bee series, go look at the completion. You want to talk about completionists? Go check out Silver Beans Counter Counter's recent video on um, his complete Queen's Bees because he's got the gold and the silver, and it's banging. I gotta get a display case for mine, I think now. That's gonna be my next thing. I've got them all rolled up in capsules. I think I need to do a, a display. All right, I'm gonna say going once. I'm gonna say going once. I'll get it at least one Freedom Girl, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I see them at auction from time to time. They usually sell at a premium. And it's just tough being, I'm like, I don't know, man. It's, I'd rather, if I, you know, sometimes I'll see them, they're five bucks more than an ASC. And I'm like, dude, that's way more recognizable coin. And, and I can resell it, I know, for more. Or put it in my stack and it'll everybody will know what it is 10 years from now. You know what I mean? So I, I always end up saving the five bucks and buying the ASC. <laughs> but I know the koalas. But I, for some reason, I, I, it's like I kind of, I got, I'm, I'm a little bit working on Libertad's. I did. I don't. I don't own one koala, and I also let's see. I don't think I own. I have the. I have all but one of the wildlife series from Canada, which are all milk spotted to crap, which I won't do again. I have been buying the Germanians, but I think I'll flip them. Oh, you know the other one, the um, oh, what was it? Um, it's the, the Atmex and Perth Mint series with the with the ships. Uh, it's the uh, Black Flag series. So I saw that one come and I saw the low mintage on the first one and I go, I'm gonna, you guys can watch my video on it. I, I go, I'm gonna tube up on this. So I actually bought a tube of the first one, I still have it. And I bought a tube of the second one, I'm gonna buy a tube of each one. And then I'll probably set them up like, you know, and sell individual sets of the completion. And I may miss the boat. I've been watching Lo Losing Louie and Silver Bean kind of talk about, you know, getting out at the right time. And that's the one thing I gotta figure out is like, okay, do I, is it time to post those things up on YouTube now? Because it's probably tapped out value wise and I end up holding on to them until they're back to being worth their intrinsic value <laughs> which is not smart all right going once going twice we're at two what are we at where are we at here 295 looking for three bills on the there's 31 walkers here guys that's not even ten dollars a walker okay and you've got 17s with clear date and 18s and some other good dates in here too I, they don't have the 21s but there's a 20 that's a low mint 20s um, some of the S's in here are lower minted, it's like sub 5 million of these minted and survival rates pretty low. So if you guys know anything about coin values and coin collecting outside of intrinsic silver value, there's a smoking deal right here on this Walker book. Um, all right. Well, give them a try, Joe. You know, you can always change your mind later unless you're thinking about it for yourself. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 99% psycho guaranteed for sure. Yeah. The other 1% are millennials. No offense to anybody in here. You have that Dansko? So, Hidden, I actually sent one of those Dan Danskos as a gift to somebody. And um, what's interesting is the page that, I, that, that came with it had the 94 to 96 run with the same size. So they didn't upsize in the 96, which is crazy, right? So I took that page and got the replacement so that he could actually put his Libertad collection in there. I sent it to Vogas, a good friend that's in here from time to time. And a um, friend from Mexico actually was in front of the, uh, in Mexico City during the major earthquake back uh, years ago. And so anyway, long story short, but I've got, I kept that Dansko page. So I was like, that's pretty cool that they punched it out when they didn't know that the size of the coin was going to change. So 
it's a cool it's a cool conversation piece not that you can do anything with it because you can only fit two coins in there all right all in all done last call three times fair warning if you're sniping or thinking about it um, every time I say that Zaphael jumps in I did say something about a silver belt buckle there he is see he hears me typing and then he goes three bills I, I knew it was out there Zaphael I just got to get off of talking Red, there is 31 walkers. Okay, we've got some new folks in here. I'm just going to walk through this one more time, guys. Okay? So this is a Whitman Classic album, okay, which is like the Dan's Co. version of the Whitman. Okay? There is a 17 with a little bit of graffiti kind of scratching on the obverse above the motto, but it's a really strong date. Then an 18 with a weaker, with a, with more circulation wear, but also, you know, semi-key date. I'm going to flip the page. Hold on one second. I'm going to put this paper under each one so you can see the coins. Otherwise, it looks like there's more than there is, right? There's the 20 and the 20S, 28, 29, 29 DNS, 33S, 34, 34D, 34S, the full run of 34s. Those are kind of, you know, harder dates or, or, or less mint. Almost a full page here. The 38D is the only one missing on this page. That's a 35, 5D, 5S, 36, 6D, and 6S, 37, 7D, and 7S, and 38, 39. There's just the 38D. That's semi-key or key date that's missing. That's probably a 30 to $40 coin in similar condition, so affordable to fill that hole. Most of these, you know, you can get without spending an arm and a leg in, in condition. 39S. I would range this all from, like, like an earlier stage. There, it's like that 18 is probably G or AG. Um, but the rest of this are probably average XF. Uh, find a find a find a very probably average VF, but fine. And then there's some extra fines in here. Okay, 40s, 42s, 43, and 43d. As you can see, like that 43, that thing is probably all of XF. Maybe, yeah, it's not, probably not AU, but it's it's good. It's a good strong XF. And when you look at the breast feathers on the back, you'll you'll see that what I'm talking about on some of these coins holds true. And then the last page has three coins on it. So there's 31 in total red. The melt value of that silver alone is 275. Plus you got the book. Plus some of these are more you know highly collectible. So there's your album, guys. Um, we got some action. We had Zaphi out 300. Sharp Eyed uh, jumped the bid with a protection bid at 310, looking for 315. Looking for 315. There's 31 of them. So we are currently at $10 per half. Walking Liberties, some semi keys, and. Yeah, Ed. Uh, you know what? I was talking to a buddy of mine who posted a video up. There's been some out there, but like there's some issues. And now there's like this whole thing about the 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 you know the the Mexico uh, City Mint, and they're they're talking about you know uh, short commodity shortage and like not having uh, precious metals to to you know mint. So it, who knows? But I've seen some floating around. I know somebody that's got a ton of them, but I'm not sure on authenticity. And a friend called me about it. And I said, you know what? He melted one to see if it was real, and it was. And then, I, and then he said, um, he said this guy had like a storage locker full of them. And I said, well, why don't you buy one and send it in for grading instead of melting it? You know, because if the grading company can't tell, then like maybe they are authentic. But he said it was really weird. It had a super weak strike to it, and it, it you know, so therefore he he couldn't tell on authenticity and was sketched out on buying more of them. He didn't want to expose himself monetarily too much. All right, guys. Um, so I'm going to start counting down again. Um, 310. Joe's going to lead at 310. Going once. Looking for 315. Zafael, if you're thinking about it, I'm going to count this down. No gold queen beast. I need like three of the 10 ounces to complete the set. I don't have a 10. I only have a two. So even the 10 is a sweet deal there, Mr. Von Mega. And... We got 310. Looking for 315. Going twice. So I got a few sets that I'm after. You know, I do go after the Germanium Mint. I think they're beautiful. I've heard uh, even Mr. Bean Counter here talking about having some problems with milk spotting. I've never experienced that on my own. So I've just kept buying them because I haven't had any that have, have spotted. 
which I think I'm fortunate compared to what I've seen from some other people. But I, I may, I get like three or four of each on those. And I think I'm probably going to just sell off a bunch and then go down to like one of each just so I have, you know, kind of one for the collection. Because I do like their artwork. Um, if they did Milk Spot, it would be a killer for me. I don't buy Canadian anymore as a result, even though they've got all the protective stuff in place now to avoid Milk Spotting. It, it's like giving me such bad taste in my mouth with my early stacking that, you know, turned out milky that I've just bailed on it. All right, guys. So I say going twice. We're going twice. And are we all in, all done? I'm going to say last call at 310. When you hear me typing, guys, it'll be probably too late if you're typing your numbers. Because when I do that, it means that I'm giving fair warning. Last call. We're at 310. Looking for three. Uh, I'm, is there a question on this? that I'm missing. I know, I'm sorry, I'm killing you again, Joe. I'm gonna count it down. I just wanna make sure, how many walkers, there's 31 in here, Red, do you wanna bid? Cause I'm gonna count it down. I mean, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it out here and Joe's had the bid out for a while. So I don't wanna see him miss out, but I do wanna call it down and not slow roll Joel, uh, slow roll sharp eye for coins again, cause I already did it once tonight. So no, you guys have had plenty of chances to bid. I'm gonna call it sold. If anybody types in afterwards, it's, uh, too bad, so sad. Congratulations, Joe. I was able to I was able to get Zafael to squeeze an extra ten bones out of you, man. But no, I was joking. I think it was a great a great purchase on this book, and um, I've got um, you know some other stuff I'm working on. I might be able to help you fill some holes on this too in the near in the near future, the next couple of weeks. So we'll chat on that. Um, all right, let's see. Somebody said belt buckle. I think it's coming up, but we're not quite there yet. Congratulations, Joe. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. Yeah. Hey, guess what, guys? We have arrived. I'm just doing melt value on this on this belt buckle. How many coin auctions put a belt buckle up, right? It's actually below melt. Look at look at Zafael. He throws a 320 bid in there, like like 10 comments after my sold. Zafael, I'm sorry. If that's a real bid, man, you got to refresh your chat because you were way late to the party on that one, dude. Way late. All right, next up is the belt buckle, baby. You guys are going to love this. I, I can't even. <laughs> so this is the way to stack, man. This is it, right? You can wear this thing into a different country. Nobody would even ask you to disclose. <laughs> If you were walking across the border with with your with you know part of your stack around your waist, I mean, come on. So this is a 1782 to 1882 American Eagle. So what this is is I did not know this by the way. So I bought this and learned something new. Man Mountain Link jumps in with 95 right out of the gate. Had all it's just an empty box. It's just an empty box. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> It's sight unseen. He's in for 95. Zafael with 96 right behind him. So American Eagle belt buckle, 200th anniversary. I did not know that it was the 200th anniversary of the American, uh, the U.S., the, the U.S. Look at that, guys. Boom. Oh, $5 increments, indeed. That's correct. 95 was protected. He did say 100. Check it, check it. E pluribus unum. There's the great seal of the United States in all of its glory in beautiful 0.925. And it's got like a really cool like burnished finish. This thing is just a piece of art, guys. I mean, it really is. Okay. And it, what, what's really cool is it flips like a coin. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so check it out, guys. 200th anniversary. And then it's got the seal up here. And it says 200th anniversary, a great seal. I did not know the great seal was made in 1782. So that's the same year as 250th anniversary of George Washington's birth. These are numbered. I don't know what the number means. It could have been a million of these things, but I, I'm guessing there's probably more like a thousand. And it was the Washington Mint back in 82 that did this. And then I believe that the arm, and I think this might be silver because it looks the same, but I think that this is like, a, you know, zinc or steel or brass or something. But there it is, guys. There's your sterling mark, maker's mark from the Washington Mint. And then the box has like this hole and a slot where this stuff on the back can go in. So there's there's what it is, guys. It is 250th anniversary of a great seal from the Washington Mint. It's 925. And it is a beautiful piece. So 
Hey, Bean, thanks for hanging out with me. This is what you were waiting for, man. You wanted to see this piece. There it is. I appreciate you chilling in the chat the whole time to get a look at item 17, which is the American Eagle belt buckle. <laughs> 925 silver. I just love it. I'm like, this thing is too cool. I got to stack silver any way I can. I think this is a neat way to do it. Put It's something that's wearable. And there's not many wearable items that you can get away with something this hefty. Um, I put it in the chat, but let's just reiterate. It is, uh, I weighed this thing, it is four and a quarter Troy ounces. So it weighs in actually, uh, I will show you guys as a matter of, of good measure. All right, so here's your scale, zeroed out in grams, okay? So this is 132 grams, okay, of sterling. Plus, you know, there's some small content of that other metal that's on there, but let's just take that into consideration. So 132 divided by 31.1 grams is 4.244 and times 0.925 gives you point or nine, or I'm sorry, 3.926. So it's over, so you take the other metal off and you round it down to 3.9 is what I'm guessing, right? Because I, you don't have to subtract the 10% for it being sterling, and you don't have to, um, you know, do the Troy measurement either. So if you take that little piece of metal right there, and I think that's silver, I think that part is, but this part's probably not, If it could be. Could be. I'm just guessing it's not. There's that. And we got some bidding action, I know. I was watching it go, but I'm trying to chat and show you guys off this stuff. So we got Nan Mountain at 95 opening us up. Thank you for the bids, everybody. Zaphael answered back at 100. Silver Bean Counter says, okay, thanks. That thing's on fire. I saw it. It's sterling. Cool. Good enough. I just wanted to look at it. I'm not going to wear that thing. By the way, let me give you guys um, let me give you guys perspective, right? Perspective would be good on this because all right, here's a scent. There's a scent. Okay? For size comparison. That's the size of a penny. So, you've got yourself uh you got yourself, you know, a pretty good, I mean, like, I got a big size hand and that thing is like, you know, not even fitting in the palm of my hand, you know, I got, I got pretty, pretty decent size hands. I mean, this thing is like, let me show you guys, I mean, it is, there's a fat hunk of silver right there. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. That is a conversation piece. I would love to see. All right, so we got uh, Sharp Eye was at 105 uh, last time I looked. Uh, I think we had 100 from Zaphael. Sharp Eye at 105. Zaphael did answer back at 110. Looking for 115. Throwing a leather belt. You know, if I had one, I'd, I don't have one that goes on like this. You'll have to figure that out, Zaphael. <laughs> you don't think of this in terms of melt. No, I, I know. I know. But that's my place of starting it, right, Joe? And I look, I kind of look at everything in terms of melt. Um, okay, so I, I just, I'm looking at this message. Hi ho, backed it out. Uh, cut bean because we were at 115. All right, he corrected it. Gotcha. No big deal. I do, yeah, I do $5 increments. Just, you know, it's not that big a deal, but it's like when we get up into these numbers, you go dollar increments or, or less, it could take, you know, we're back and forth dollar, dollar. It's fun, but it takes a long time. So that's why we, um, okay, so. Dude, how is the bean not a mod too? I just got like bean. You got to be a mod on my channel just out of like respect, okay? Tip of the hat to my man, the bean, who I got to give a wrench to, okay? All right, so we got Zaphael at one ten. We got a bean counter at one fifteen. Zaphael enters back at one twenty. Bean, you got a wrench. Zaphael's in the lead at one twenty. Looking for 125. I mean, 
I've never seen another one of these. I was trying to do research on them. This could be a $500 belt buckle, guys. I do not know. I do not know. And the only way you'd be able to find it is to find one that's sold. I guarantee, you know, I doubt, I can't guarantee, I doubt that you'll find one that's been selling below the silver value. But what I'm saying is I can't find them on eBay. I can't find them anywhere. So, you know, it could be that, you know, there was 700 of these made. They were given to government officials. <laughs> And the next thing you know, you know who knows where, where, what the history is. I, did, I was not able to find out enough about it. It could be a $1,000 belt buckle. It could be $500,000, and the silver content doesn't even really matter, right? That's the kind of thing. And so, you know, let your fingers do the walking. If you can find out about this belt buckle while we're doing this, this auction and during the bid, you, you might get yourself a great. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually, you know... It, it, I mean, just looking at it from a junk silver value, it's awesome. But I look at this as like some of the finest poured work. I mean, that's an anniversary piece. So you have U.S. Mint. You have collectability value on that, right? It's beautiful. It's actually wearable. It's Washington Mint, which is well known. You've got you've got a history item, which it's 200 year anniversary of, uh, which I didn't even know of the mint insignia. And then you've got a you know, you, you, you've got a collectible numismatic, or not numismatic, but a, a, a intrinsic value from the silver. I mean, it's got so much going for it from a collectability value, right? It, this this piece has so much going. It's better than anything I could put out there from a poured value standpoint from that because you just, it, it crosses so many genres of collectors, right? Stackers, collectors, coin people, uh, political collectors, um, Washington Mint collectors, silver stackers. I mean, it's just like a million different ways so it's a pretty cool way to add a little bit of silver to your collection and um, silver bean counter jumps the zaphael is at 120 i had silver bean at 125 zaphael at 130 i'm catching up on chat here 150 silvers silver bean counter jumps the bid with a protected bid at 150 looking for 155 you could probably find a buyer on this for big money. I would bet you're right, Henry. I think I think no matter how high this goes in this stream, nobody gets hurt buying this thing tonight. Uh, this is one of those unique items that, like, you know, they're coming out of the woodwork to look for. My, and my friend Silver Bean in the lead at 150. Zafael thinking about it. My good friend Zafael out there contemplating. Silver Stacker extraordinaire. Zafael, if you don't know Bean Counter, man, you got to check out his channel, too. Great great silver expert stacker collector hi ho says looking for 150 okay sure you can find it. and then prides himself on a speedy auction of oh, 25 cent increments y'all <laughs> ah, thank you man mountain lake that's right because you know i'll take all the time in the world chatting so if you guys are bidding 25 50 cents or a dollar <laughs> You know, then it just it, then it it'll take me even longer because every time a bid hits, I talk for another twenty minutes. <laughs> so many new people in here wanting to be a cowboy for sure. Hey, Brando, good to see you back. Yep, it is. It is a sweet hunk of silver, man. I'm gonna show the back one more time and I'm gonna count it down. Okay, I'm gonna move this scent now that you guys all saw perspective. That was the point of that. I'm going to take this and flip it. So it is. 200th anniversary of the Great Seal of the U.S. 1782 to 8, 1982. This is number si uh, 632 from the Washington Mint. I don't know how many were minted. Obviously, it was a limited edition, or they wouldn't have numbered it. And then over here, where is it? Over here, you can see the the mark for uh, identif identifying that it's silver. Washington Mint is well known, so I'm gonna flip it back again and say we're going once. Yeah, no solds in the past year on eBay. So is, it, is there one even listed on there, Man Mountain Link? I can't even find one. It, this could literally be one of those things that was given to dignitaries, dignitaries or, you know, um, folks from out of, you know, because it's the great seal. It's not necessarily a coin item. And the Washington Mint makes stuff for all different things, inauguration, political events. They do the uh, inauguration coins. It, it literally could be something where there's only, you know, 750 of them they were given to you know whatever like you know the top five brass dignitaries from each country or something who knows right all right we're going once i'm counting it down bean zaphiel's thinking i'm gonna give him a chance here going twice we're at 150 looking for 155 the one i found was off ebay all right 
Where were where were you priced? I, I know my 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 Adam's apple goes in my, my my stomach goes in my throat when I ask you that. Maybe I should wait till after the auction sale. <laughs> Cause you know, you feel bad if it's a hundred, you feel horrible if it's a thousand. <laughs> and oh we got Zaphael 155, looking for 160. I'm going to start the bid over. I'm going to keep it going from this point. Beans thinking about it. We're at 155, looking for 160. We're going, we're going once. This is like a one-of-a-kind item, too. It's not like I can put another one of these back on a block next week. Guys, I may never see one again in my life. 155, looking for 160. Going once. Give him being a chance. He's thinking about it. I don't think anybody gets hurt in this price range. I would not feel bad if somebody paid two or three hundred for this thing. You never know who wore it. Yeah, I don't think it's been worn. I mean, it's the way it's packaged in this box. I think it's brand. I think somebody was given this or collected this as a limited run, and that's it. You know. Zafael's at 155 going twice. Hey, bean counter, man. Did you one 160? He says. Okay, bean counters in at 160, looking for 165. Starting the count over for you guys. We're at 160, looking for 165, going once. It is an auction. It is an auction. And going twice. I don't have a timer, so I'm trying to just do it off the cuff here. So just keep in mind. <laughs> Henry wants to clean it. All right, that's the second count. So, Zafael, if you're thinking about it, I'm giving you fair warning. He's been, and anybody else, there's been some other bidders in here. I just want to let you guys know it's my third one. When I start typing, I say fair warning. I say, all in, are we questioning if we're all in, all done at 160, looking for 165? Because if I type the D and the exclamation point on the S on the end of SOL, that means if you don't have your numbers in the chat, you are SOL. You heard me typing. It's probably too late. You've heard me type, right? All in, all done. 160, looking for 165. I'd feel a lot better if you told me you were out, Zafael, because I don't know. But I'm going to have to call it down because I'm slow rolling at this point. I know there's a lag too, John. Uh, all right. I'm going to say sold. I counted it down. I gave a lot of time. Zaphiel will do this to me. You watch what happens. Bean counter, congratulations, my friend. You watch what happens. In about 25 seconds, Zaphiel is going to jump in here and bid like 200. <laughs> you know it. You know it. John Nelson, try to go up top where it says live chat over here and click on the button. And, you know, yeah. Zafael told me out. Thank you. That makes me feel better. Henry's trying to just stick one to me here with a 165 bid. A little bit late, Henry, but thank you. You weren't in the bidding earlier, so I don't feel as bad. But I do feel – I would have felt bad for Zafael because he was fighting for that one with Bean. Hey, up here in the corner, um, make sure you're on live chat. And if you're not, hit the button and switch from top to live chat. You missed the snipe indeed. All right. Hey, congrats. Bean counter, dude, you always come in for these unique items. It's like you get my email, you know, you look at the list and you're like, that is what I'm buying. It's either it's either a peace dollar with like a sticker on it or some random thing that's very unique, right? I'm pretty pumped because I actually, um, I have a feeling this might make its way into YouTube Hall of Infamy on Bean Counter's channel. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> congrats. Congrats on that one, Silver Bean Counter. That's super cool, man. Unboxing this thing up. I will package it very well, too. I'm going to put some bubble wrap inside and around it. i got to find the lid before I run it over with my chair. All right, here's the lid. All right, man, that thing is ready to go your way. I will package it up and send it out. I will, uh, I will email you an invoice, man. No need to send me anything until... Um, need a macchiato, Henry? All right, get the sugar-free version, my friend. You got candy corn now. You need a macchiato, man. You're gonna have uh, just don't go into shock on us, okay? I mean that's the thing. It can be dangerous when you're consuming that much sugar, my friend. All right, so uh, all right, B and D, congratulations. And let's see, it was a 160 from SBC. 
my original. All right, we got some we got some junk. Uh, let's see here, guys. I'm gonna. <laughs> the Big Mac skin with a belt with this belt buckle at your next coin show. Oh my gosh, that is maybe the most. Okay, how do I pin that comment? <laughs> okay, is that, did I pin that comment? <laughs> you guys see that? Okay, that's a pinnable comment right there, dude. That's epic. All right, so, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm totally gonna do that. Ida Herring, what's going on? Did you get my stickers? I hope you got them this time. I sent it with tracking and everything. Thank you, Silver Bean Counter. Congratulations. That's so funny. Various roll, uh, various dates roll of 90, various dates and mint marks, I should say. Rando show. That was good, huh? All right. All right. So we're doing a little uh, constitutional here, guys. So it's a various date roll. And I, I, I started this below melt, but I don't know if melt has gone down since I started this. Um, but this is a roll of 50 dimes. Uh, let's see if, let's see where Melt is. Henry already opened us. John Nelson jumped in at 90, at 90 and we have Henry at 90. Henry, $5 increments, my friend. $5 increments. We, we are over the amount. So um, let's see here. I'm going to, I'm going to find out where Melt is because silver price moved around a little bit. Hold on. Where is silver price? Twenty four fifty. I thought it was a. I thought maybe I'd type that in because it's right on the nut, right on the half dollar. So twenty four fifty uh, melt value right now. Constitutional. Most of the dealers are selling uh, stuff. I mean, you can look it up, but it's you know it, it's it's twenty three, twenty four dollar uh, a dollar. Um, so this this is well below that start. Um, so John Nelson in the lead at 90, Zafael at 95. I had uh, Henry, I had Zafael at 95. You guys, uh, you could bid, you could bid above that, but it's got to at least be a five dollar increment. Okay, so Zafael was at 96, John Nelson at 101. So yeah, I started at below melt. I did. Melt was at 88.62 at the current melt, uh, the current spot on silver. So I did. I can still say that about the quarters that are coming up next as well. They're starting below melt value. Uh, just wanted to make sure that was the case. So we got 101 from John Nelson. Looking for 106. Jump the bid. Protective bid at 101. He says, that's what I want to pay, and I don't think anybody will go five over me. You may be right. I think they're in decent shape. It's constitutional silver, guys. Yeah, they call it junk. You know, you find RPMs and stuff like that in here, and all of a sudden it's not junk anymore, right? <laughs> you find a double die on the back of one of these things and sell it for five bucks. You find three of them and sell them for five bucks on eBay, and all of a sudden you're not dealing with melt. I mean, uh, with uh, junk. You're dealing with constitutional, right? We changed the we changed the phrase. Turn that light down so you can see it. There you go. That's a rosy, ninety percent roll. Uh, it's always paper trading on a Sunday night, right? I mean, for the most part, unless something dramatic happens in the world. Um, and you get the you get you know folks over the pond. It's starting to get to their morning, so you see what's you kind of watch the news, see what IMF, Russia, China, everybody that's you know influential on these things is doing, and figure out what the impact is. But yeah, for the most part, paper trading. I would agree. Um. Looking for 106, going once, going once. We got a roll of rosies. It's your constitutional. It's stacking silver and doing it on the cheap, guys. I mean, five bucks at, you know, at, let's see, where's Atmex? Where's Atmex on these right now? You know, could, could be digging myself a hole by looking that up during a live auction, right? I mean, certainly could be, but I also like to be fair. I'm going to say we're going twice. I'm going to keep the count going while I'm looking at Atmex. Atmex has a silver spot at 24.58, so they're actually looking at a little bit higher. Um, let's see, where's their 90% on here? They're kind of a higher price, too, for, for some of the um, 
But everybody's kind of in that range right now on, on where is their 90%? There it is, junk, silver, all. And rolls and bags of 90%. Okay, all in, all done. Last call. Yeah, see, they're, they're, they got dimes at 95 on sale, actually. So they're, they're five bucks under. And then you got shipping. So you got to, you probably pay five or 10 bucks unless you get over 100. So you got to buy something else from them. But hey, that's 10 bucks above. So that's that's a pretty good deal. That's actually a pretty good deal on that, Max. And they're 191 on face on quarters. So we'll adjust. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Atmex is at 95, 96. I'm going to say all in, all done, sold. I didn't see any other bid. Later, bean counter. Hey, awesome start of the week. Hey, thank you, man. It was fun, and it's always a blast having you in here. Thank you so much for hanging out. Cool beans, man. Thank you, and congrats on the win. That's cool. <laughs> I will look for you at the next coin show. <laughs> that is so cool. That's super funny, man. Uh, no, that is not credit card price. Let me just double check. I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, it says any quantity. Credit card is 99.69. Yep. You're right. 99.69. So you can pay with a check and save four bucks. 99.69. So we were within a dollar of that. Yeah. Um, so we had Zafael, we had Henry, we had John Nelson. Let me just see something. John Nelson, I'm going to save you a buck and call it a hundo. Uh, it's, it would have been with shipping and stuff because these will ship for four bucks. But I'm going to give Henry and Zafael an opportunity. I've got two more of these rolls. So if you want, you two, only you two guys that were bidding in there, Henry and John, you got this one at 100. If you guys also want one at 100, I'll do it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I got two more. Just tell me. I won't forget you, Joe. Henry, you want one of these at a hundred? I've got I've got three rolls. And you're saving a buck. It's only a buck, John, but yes. <laughs> and then and then Henry, and then I will also offer uh Zafael the same deal. So if you guys want that, the roll of of these basically at the credit card price that Admax has right now. So let me know. Just type bin in the chat if you want one of these rolls. Yeah, Henry. They're all dimes. They're all Roosevelt. 90% silver. I'm going to bag this one and put John Nelson's name on it. You can have. You want one. Yes, he says. Okay. And and they look to be in similar con condition. And Henry says bin. And then, Zafael, do you want the other one? Or should I hold on to it for another day? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to put all three of you down. I'm just going to put these three rolls as a buy it now. This is the one that goes to John. It was the one that I showed. Just separate it out, and I will randomly send the other two. Uh, okay. John, send me an email like I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's basically all there is for registration, and then I will invoice you later tonight on the address that you sent. me an email from all right next up so let's see where I was uh, I was at Atmex and I was looking at okay thank you sir I'll check later and I will send you that we're gonna do a start bid on this one let me just double check yeah they've got Atmex has quarters at 191 if it's a check they're at 200 bucks we're starting at 175 on this 
175. This is the roll of Washington's. I there's 64s on. Let's see, 64 on both ends. So you got a good chance that you have a you know fairly uncirculated or fairly um, almost uncirculated or XF kind of quality, which means you can retain a higher value of silver if they're all 64s. I can't guarantee you that that's what's in here, but uh, I'm gonna put John's name on this roll. So we'll open the bidding at 175. Henry jumps in and gives us a 175 opener. Again, 200 bucks on Atmex, so 25 bucks below that, not bad. Looking for 180. Got 175 from Henry Von Mega looking for 180. Zaphiel jumps in at 180. Looking for 185. We are still below melt, by the way. <laughs> I think melt is, I don't know where melt is. I think it's 185 or 190 if I'm not mistaken. Anyway. You probably wouldn't have to clean them, no. And if you did, you might lose some silver content. <laughs> so, but there is 40 of them, not 50. So I gotta type. I gotta fix my number over here. Yeah, 177 was the the actual melt uh, content of the, of the 90% silver in it. But anyway, below the below market for them anyway. Where where we are with uh, the dealers out there? I think they're at like you know a lot of them are at 20 plus dollars base. Zafael answers back. Henry was at 80, 185. Zafael answers back at 190. Still some room to hit the app next price. Um, I'm packaging up these uh, these other rolls for you guys while you're bidding. So writing your names on them so that I make sure I don't forget. There you go, Zafael. You're on the ball. You know exactly what you're buying and where it is currently. I would love one of these days that thing will be on and and it'll be like it'll go from. Once it'll go from 175 or 180 or 190 or whatever, and it'll it'll be a thousand for the same melt, right? That's what's gonna happen one of these days. One of these days, that silver price is gonna take a skyrocket, right? All right, we had Henry at 185, we had Zafael at 190. And Henry says out, thank you. And 190. So any other bidders? We got 190 on the ten dollar face. Heavy duty. I mean seven ounces of silver in there plus of 64s. And we're going once. We're going twice. Are we all in all done? Let me give you a fair warning, guys. I gotta get to a giveaway here. Anybody else? Anybody else on the roll of constitutional quarters? Yes. Well, let's let's see. Fingers crossed, Henry. We'll all be doing good. Awesome, Joe. Hey, you you let me know on the spin. You don't want to see that currency next, huh? You, you you're like that's it. Are we all in? All done? One nineties. Afael three times. Last call. Yeah, that, well, you know, look, it, sometimes it's more fun over there, okay? I do way less singing and stuff like that, so, you know, definitely more fun. Uh, and that's my bro from another Mo. So, you know what I mean? It, it, it like, I, but, you know, somebody early on told me, don't let other people's streams dictate your schedule. You just got to do your own thing on, on YouTube, and if it, you know, if it crosses over, it crosses over. So, I'm, I'm glad you joined in here, and I think you hunted some really good value tonight. All in, all done. Last call. Fair warning. And the giveaway, Joe. We're sold at 190. Zafael. All right, Zafael. Congratulations. This is an item. I'm probably way below market on this, guys. Um, in, in lesser condition, I've seen them going at like the 40 range. 
Hey, Joe, the other thing I was going to ask you, you were mentioning grab bags earlier, so if you bounce, it's all good, but I just wanted to make sure before you do that I know you had spent some digit, like the book and stuff like that that you won probably pushed you out, uh, but just want to let you know if you... We're going to go to the last item, and then I'll do a giveaway, guys. If you want, you're staying for sale. I'm not singing. I said I don't sing. Okay, so this is a graded item, guys. Uh, PCGS currency graded this. However, these old plastic holders that they put them in would separate, and then the paper would come off. So it's got a very thin piece of tape going up to the edge of it to keep the seal on it, basically, so it doesn't come off. But... That is what that looks like. It, the serial number matches. You can see that it wasn't. You, you can see in the item here the serial number, plate number, and it all matches down below. This is the Philly, which is a more desirable of uh, the 10 brown seal notes. It's a starting bit at 35. Brando Show answers up, uh, or ants. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, Brando Show shows up with $35 to open. It's a very fine 25 it's a beautiful note, and it's the national currency, Federal Reserve uh, national currency, United States bonds deposited with the Treasury of the U.S. or by like deposit of other securities. So this is backed by securities issued by a bank. It was the Federal Reserve Bank, a private institution of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and that would be who was paying you. So it was secured by it's national security. Our national currency secured by the by the US issued by them in 29 it's got Jones and uh, who is that uh, wood wood I forget it's, it's Woodry or something um, I'm not even going to attempt the governor and the and the uh, cashier down here but those are their signatures issue of 29 there's combos that are worth a lot on these Joe, uh, yeah, it's 1860C, and what is that? Federal Reserve 1860C, so that has to do with like the bank number, so I think Philadelphia, now that was a letter that indicated them, so what is the 1860? You're going to have to take something that knows more about currency than I do. It's got Hamilton on it, I can tell you that. No, it is a 1929, but there's an 1860 on the top of the thing, and it, it does stand for something, and I forget exactly what that is. I wanted to say it was the federal, the bank number that's indicated. Like, like C is Philadelphia, like 1860C is what indicated that it's Philly. So you, you really don't even need to see that printing on there to look at this note and know where it's from if you know what you're looking at. That's kind of the way that that works. There's the reverse of the note. So you can kind of get an idea of what a BF25 looks like if you're sending in paper to get graded by these guys. Pretty well centered. It's got a little bit heavier margin at the bottom or thicker margin at the bottom. There is a little tear at the top. It looks like small little, you know, kind of maybe a pinhole or two. Uh, some crease, creasing and staining is visible long ways. And then in front of Hamilton's face. But still a pretty cool numismatic item which i believe numismatic uh still currency falls in a numismatic category so look we've got an opening bid of 35 from brando so if i don't hear anything further i'm going to say i'm going to say it's a countdown the bank variation so brando you know what you're buying more than i know what i'm selling my friend and you probably have priced this out because I was looking at them and the lowest comp I could find was 40 bucks uh, a long time. And Joe is in the lead with $1,860. Looking for $1,865. Thank you for the bid, Joe. Looking for $1,865. We have $1,860. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, hundreds of banks, indeed. So the bank number is $1,860. So if you find one that's like the harder one to catch, sometimes they're... I think the average of these go for like a hundred bucks right now. I found one of these on eBay for a hundred bucks, 110. That seems to be the market for them. But I found one that it sold and I don't know if it matched. Um, also there's plate numbers. You can tell if it's a mule or whatever based on, you know, the plate matching up and stuff. So there's all, anyway, I've, I've had this in my collection for some time. It's the only piece of uh, maybe one of two pieces of graded currency I have. I also have a 
Uh, I also have a large one star note uh, or funny back star note that's in really nice shape that is great. It's the only other coin I have, or the only other bill I have that's graded other than this one. So I decided I'd move this one on out of my collection into somebody's. Today it's looking like that might be Brando, Brando Calrissian. The jumping in the Millennium Falcon here for a ride on this ten dollar note. Going once. If I said going once already, I apologize. My my memory is not what it used to be when I was in my thirties and early forties. Going twice. It is a younger version of Hamilton, isn't it? He's got quite the way his smile turns up at the end of his, uh, you know, kind of kind of kind of a smug look, isn't it? The way that kind of like it, just a little. I may put that up someday, Henry. Just keep showing up to the auction, and you may see it. I'm not there yet. I'm still holding on to it. I have a hard time parting with things. I like to own things for a period of time, and then I move them on. You know, it's like I've had my time to enjoy them and, and view them. Henry's out. All right. Second call, second call. Going twice. All in, all done. Fair warning. Last call. Anybody else that wants to bid. The bid is 35. It's the opening bid of 35, Joe. Looking for... 36, I guess, is what I was looking for. But I'm typing already because Brandon's in the lead with 35, and I was looking for 36. But I don't think I said I was looking for 36. All right. Going twice. I'm trying to get to my giveaway here. I got a giveaway of a little gram bar from Valcambi and another sticker. All in all done, I'm going to type here. Joe's at 36. Brando, I slow rolled you. I got you back. I got, I got Joe back, or I got you back for what I did to Joe earlier. <laughs> 36, looking for, Brando jumps to bid to 38. I'm looking for 39. Actually, I'm looking for 100, but 39 would do. Joe says 40. <laughs> I think I'm at fair market on the last sale I saw at 40, uh, although the next closest listing is 100. Brando says 44. I think Brando knows this note, and you might not want to mess with him, Joe, but Joe says maybe I know it too, 45. Sometimes in this stream, you just got to wait. Stackin' AG shows up with a $46 bid out of the blue. Brando says he's out. <laughs> Stackin' AG, dude, how are you doing? 48 from Sharp Eye for coins. Looking for 49. At 50, we go to $5 increments, guys. So if you jump the bid to 50, we go to fives. 55 would be the next bid. Not the slow roll. I know. I you know I do it on accident, Henry, but it always serves me well when I slow roll. I don't do it to like piss people off, really. I just do it because I have a tendency to be just a little scatterbrained, and I get to chatting, and then I forget that like I'm in the middle of counting an auction down. You know what I mean? I should wait to talk until after the auction is what I should do, but I'm really bad at that. <laughs> I keep everybody entertained, I guess. Brando jumps back in at 50, looking for 55. He's probably got a book and he's looking this note up and he's like 50's half price. So he's going 50, looking for 55. Stacking AG, thanks for the bid. Joe, sharp eye for coins, thanks for the bid. Looking for 55, Brando in the lead, going once. I'm gonna start counting it down again because I failed to do that last time. Stacking AG, it's great to see you in here. By the way, I was mentioning you earlier and uh, Silver Bean Counter was in here. He bought a silver belt buckle from me, dude. And I gotta say, I was like, yeah, everybody's asking me for poured silver. And I said, you know, I would like to have some poured silver in here. I've been talking to my boy, Sterling, and I've also been talking to Stack and AG. I think both of them may jump in with a little. All right, going twice. I can't forget what I'm doing here. Going twice. Stack and AG is one of the bidders, so i got to keep it going here. Going twice. And if we're all in, all done, I feel a lot better about a $50 bid than I did about 35 to be frank with you. I think... 35 is, is way low for what compared to what I paid for this. And I think 55 might be Joe, Joe's in at 55, looking for 60. That might be the range. I think I paid more than that, but I'm, I'm okay with it. Like I said, I've had it for a while. I've had it for quite a while. 50, going once. 55, sorry, going once. It was a badass belt buckle. It was the best belt. Did I get my package? Stack and AG, I have uh, 
uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, okay. I don't know if some of these may have like uh, people's addresses, so I can't show it. I literally have like 20 packages over here on my chair. I need to do another. If you've been watching my channel, I've had these unboxings. And what's happened is I've got about three or four of them posted up. Then I do my auction. I do my packaging and mailing out. And by the time I get back to posting another video, it's like the next week again. Plus, I got my normal day job. You know what I mean? So, and raising kids, <laughs> you know. And so, it's like, dude, I got a lot. Plus, you know, I'm active in my church and local community. So, I just, I have it. I have it, I think. Stacking AG. I'm going to check right now, dude. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Who's this from? Oh, there's the one from Mask Man. Oh, wow. Dude, I got so many packages I got to get through. Stack, and I know, I, I think I, Beth Coddington, that's an old one. Roadrunner, SHTF. I got a package here from Joe Sharp, actually. Uh, Baja Wildman, no, no. I got a package here from Dean that's got like 14 ounces of silver in it. It's crazy. Was this coming from... Uh, Remind me where what state it was coming from, Stack and AG. Was it was it West? No, that what that wasn't West Virginia, right? No, that's not it, dude. I don't know if I did. I don't think I have it yet. No, nope, I don't. Stack and AG. Wait a minute. Nope, that's not it. Oh wait, nope. That's Keevan Rose. I got two packages from Keevan Rose. Stacking AG, I don't have it yet, dude. Can you track it? Or let me check my tracking. SHTF, who's this? No. Dude, I, I have to unbox these. I'm gonna just have to tear through these on a live stream to get through all of them. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to do it. Huh. Tomoko, man, 14 ounces of pours from Tomoko. I can't wait to open this thing. I just, I have so many packages here. So it's almost all poured silver. Like it's literally like I'm a poured silver fanatic. Mask man. So no, stack and AG, I don't see it, my man. I don't see it over here with my stuff. So um, I only have one Dominion of Can I only have one or two, and it was a gift from my good friend Mike GPO Brando. But I will keep my eye open for some. Are you talking about like the devil notes and stuff like that from uh, Queen Elizabeth devil notes? Okay, it's at my P.O. Box. Stack and AG, thank you. I will go over there with stuff that's being mailed out tomorrow, and I will check it. I only get over there usually like once a week. All right, so we're all in, all done. Who, who do we have here? Brando's thinking about this at 60. He's going, hey, if you can find me a Dominion of Canada note, I'd go 60 on this one. But um, it sounds like... I need to be counting this down for Mr. Joe. Going once. We're look. We're at 55, I think. Looking for 60. We're at 55. Looking for 60. Going twice. Give everybody a chance to think about jumping back in at 60. We're at 55. Looking for 60 on the Philly. Very fine 25. Federal Reserve Brown Seal Banknote. Wilson just threw a big pick. Uh, I'm going to have to get out there. All right, Stack Nagy. I'll go down there. Thank you very much, by the way, ahead of time. And I'm going to say all in all done, fair warning, guys, because I've been slow rolling everybody on this last item, just like I've done a few times tonight uh, accidentally. Not intentionally, but thank you very much for all your bids. And I'm typing, if you hear this. You're going to be too late to get a bid in because, all right, <laughs> we're sold. All right, Joe, congratulations. You got yourself some currency there, my man. Um, all right, this time I'm going to go with one of the old school. Well, I'm going to do one of these collect. I got to do a collecting history video too. I've got one written down that I want to do. All right, we're doing a giveaway, guys, and it's going to be a Valcambi Swiss grammar, okay? So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a one gram silver bar from Valcambi. They're premium little pieces, you know. They sell for 
handful. I mean, a, it's probably the most expensive gram of silver out there other than poured artwork, right? Like jewelry type stuff. Pretty cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sticker and I'm going to write a number on the back of it. Congratulations, Joe. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for the bids. Stick around uh, for a second here, guys, because we got 18 in the chat right now. And I'm going to pick a number. Uh, let's see, between 1 and 25. Okay? And it's written in red on the back of that sticker. And when, wait till I say go. Wait until I type go. And one guess. One guess only. If you guess twice, I'm going to have to disqualify. And it's going to be a number between 1 and 25. You want multiple guesses? And then I got to go off the first on my screen? Okay, I don't care. Multiple guesses. But wait till I say go. All right? And it's 1 through 25. Everybody ready? It's written on the back. You, Hidden, you've won like two of two or three of the last giveaways I've done. I've got this drawer full of giveaways. By the way, if nobody gets it by the time I say stop, then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go with the highest number or the closest to it without going over kind of a thing. And, you know, that, that'll be how we, uh, that'll be how we do it. All right, guys. Thank you for the bids. Thank you for the, thank you for the bids on this sticker. Let's see who was the high bid on the sticker. Uh, we had Joe Sharp at 23. We had Stacking AG at 420, baby. And uh, that was the high bid for the sticker. This was a bid for a sticker, guys. You didn't know that? It was a cash bid for a sticker. Everybody stop. Stop, stop, stop. I already have it. I'm going to show you the number. That way you guys know you don't need to guess anymore. Guess who? Guess who? Right out of the gate. Uh, I had John Nelson with 16. Brando showed 17. Hidden with 12. And then Sharp Eye Four Coins at Vente tres. Vente, vente, vente. Vente tres. <laughs> we still got people guessing up in here. Up in here, up in here. <laughs> All right. Congrats, Joe. I'm going to write your name on there so I don't forget that that goes to you. And include it in your package. And uh, that'll get that'll get going. That'll be going out to you, my my man, along with your note and your walkers and all kinds of other good stuff that you picked up today. Wow! I mean, for twenty items, this felt like a marathon. I mean, I was I know I was going for quite a quite a bit. I, I'm like it's almost like I'd love to do an unboxing right now with you know like like with stuff. But the problem with that is that I like to give people they're due if they send me something you know like i want to show them respect by opening it and putting a video up sometimes it's like little minor things like a thank you card or a sticker trade i'll open five or six of those at once on like a video or on a stream but like the stuff i've got here guys i mean 14 ounces of silver from dean on a pour or maybe it was 12 but anyway it's a lot of silver and i'm sitting here thinking okay I can't just, you know, I got to give that guy a special shout out video for pouring that stuff. I've got such unique items coming from him. The rat stack was in here earlier. You guys saw my video last week. The rat stack poured me this and it is, it's amazing because it's tiny, but it's got weight. Like this is a nice, and look at the way it's like machined off at the end. And then he's got his stamp and nine triple nine fine on there. See that it's all hand poured and hand, hand stamped. Super cool. And then Sterling Cannabis sent me this little mini cross, which I love. It's got it's a cross, but it's got like pour lines. I opened that one on camera. Got another package from him. We did a trade. Oh, can't wait to open. He's got like these stalactite and stalagmite type pours that he does. I don't know how he does them. Uh, super cool. And I and I just traded him up for some constitutional. Sterling Cannabis loves to trade constitutional silver for poured silver guys. So you can get triple nine, you can take your 90% and turn it into triple nine fine. All you gotta do is send that guy an email, go to his channel, check him out, hit him up on a trade. Stack and AG, who you've heard me talking about, guys, he does awesome, awesome work. Dean's videos, I mean, he did so much. He's done a lot for the community, but also like hook a brother up with helping Dean out by donating a bunch of stuff. And then he did a giveaway of a three ounce skull pour, which is epic. And I mean, just really good artwork, a lot of really cool stuff, unique stuff. So 
check out stacking AG47. You've seen him in the chat, guys. Go check his channel out. It's stacking with no G, just stacking and then space, capital A, lowercase g, and the number 47. Those last four letters and digits are together. So it's stacking space AG47. Check out his channel. Everybody else in here, hit each other up, guys. I mean, that's it's cool. Um, it is so Hawaii, isn't it? <laughs> you have a great night too, Stacking AG. I appreciate you hanging out, man, stopping in, saying hello. You guys got to own, own some Stacking AG silver in your stack if you don't already. That is correct, Sharp Eye. That's why I picked it. He is... Uh, he was the great one before like Gretzky, Gretzky was the great one. I mean, he was like, I just remember being in high school and watching like, uh, what do they call it? Showtime, right? They had Showtime, which was the Lakers with Kareem and Magic. And who else was on that team? Um, uh, Worthy. Um, uh, what was what's uh, one dude's name? He's a coach now. Derek, uh, what's his name? Can't remember. Um, just so many amazing. I mean, so many amazing players in the league at that point, right? And they go up, and then you had like Isaiah on the on the Pistons, but and, and then you know Scotty and uh, and Steve Kerr and the boys from the Dream Team, right? That's really what made it. It's just a watch. Jordan like get out there. He played against the best of the best, and it was, it was just nobody with the. So people can you know would argue that oh maybe Kobe was better, and you know maybe um, LeBron is better you know and like understood like you know and going back people would say even in his day maybe like Dr. J or you know uh, Wilt the Stilt or something like that. But like Jordan, there was a certain grace and like effortlessness that appeared to be going on. That was like otherworldly when you watched him play and and Pippen, yeah. So I got a great story for you, Joe. So I I used to play cards back in the day, and I went to I went down to the Paradise Island in the Bahamas, and I was playing cards late at night. And my wife and I it was we had our firstborn. He was like a year or two old, and we took we were down in Florida vacationing, fishing trip, and I was like, let's just go over to the Bahamas for a week. So we bounced and we go down, and that's where Jordan used to go gamble. You know, he's a big gambler back in the day, right? And Pippen too. And so I'm in Paradise Island at the casino and I'm playing blackjack and it's only me. Like I'm the only one in the place at like two in the morning and across on the other side of the pit is one of the blackjack table with the dealer. And there's two, there's three people there, two guys that are together and one other guy. And the one other guy is kind of drunk and he's smoking a cigar. And the two other guys are kind of burly. They're kind of big. And one of them has got a flat top, a tall fade flat top. Who should it be? And this is like circa nine, uh, 2000, maybe 2002, 2001, it's Scotty Pippen with the flat top. And with him is his bodyguard who's just basically watching him or his buddy who's huge, like bigger than him, who's watching him play cards. And I'm watching from across the pit and the, and the one guy is like blowing cigar smoke in his face and talking about, you know, how great he is and all this kind of stuff, but he's just kind of getting, and, and Pippen's like, can you quit blowing that smoke in my face? And finally, like, you know, the guy's, oh, yeah, sorry, you know, but he's drunk. And after a little bit, he goes, he, he like, does it again. He looks at him and he just, like, blows this big pile of cigar smoke right in, in Pippin's face. And at that point, like, the bodyguard reaches over and, like, smashes the cigar, like, boom, smashes the cigar in the guy's face or knocks it out of his mouth or something. And then the guy, like, throws his arm up like he's going to, like, fight back. And, and all of a sudden, him and Pippin are into it. The table turns over. The chips spill everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. And I'm looking at the pit boss. I'm looking at the dealer can't turn around. They're not allowed to turn around when they're facing the blackjack table. So he, I'm like, he's like, what's going on over there? And I'm like, dude, the guy just got in a fist fight with Scotty Pippen. And like, I can't even believe it, right? What I'm seeing right now, they're on the ground, rolling around on the ground, and the table and the chips are everywhere. I'm like, there's no security in this place. This is crazy. You could like walk out of here with you know a table full of chips. Nobody. Could. He goes, yeah. It's during the count. There's like the count that goes on at night, and the count was going on. And he goes, they're doing a count right now, so all the security is watching like the, the money room, you know. And there's only like one guy out here, and he's probably checking rooms or doing his rounds. 
And so then all of a sudden, like you could tell that they got it on the radio from the pit boss who had been on the phone the whole time. And the door flies open from like a side, you know, kind of be the casino cage. And all of a sudden, like 50 security guards, like whatever, it seemed like a lot. It's probably five security guards come running out, like hot, hot tailing over. And they pull everybody off, but you could tell right away they knew who Pippen was. So, like, they kind of let him go earlier than they let the guy go because they, you know, they're not looking for a lawsuit from some famous celebrity. But oh my gosh, yeah, it was the, it was, it was the Bobby Brown fade. Yep, the Bobby Brown. That was like, probably, he was probably before, yeah, he was probably with Whitney by then, but man. What a crazy scene that was. I used to love to play cards back. I totally swore off on it. Don't do, don't play cards. I don't even play like friendly, you know, poker games with my friends anymore, but I used to love poker and, um, yeah, tournaments and everything, you know, high limit games and things. And then I also used to love blackjack. And the thing is, you know, I would go and I would play, um, you know, at some of the bigger name things like, like Paradise Island. I play it, you know, play at Bellagio. I played all night with Michael J. Fox one time. I got another great story with Michael J. Fox playing cards one night. So uh, I'll tell you that one on another stream probably. We'll save that one for another time. But, yeah, number 23 was the best, the best ever. I got, I've been watching basketball for a lot of years, guys, and I would just say I would just say that, yeah, he was the Muhammad Ali of basketball for sure in the early days. I mean, it's just – I mean, it's just – you know that he showed up. He would practice before practice and after practice. And when he was on, you know, the course. And, and a lot of it has to do with competition, too. Like like Tiger Woods, right? Like, I watched Tiger play at a professional event. And before we got there early to watch them tee off. And before we got there, he was on a practice tee hit, hitting ball, buckets of balls. And then he played a full round. And then after the round, he was back on the practice tee. And they had it all roped off. And I was like, and it was like nobody else out there. It was dark out. And the dude's like out hitting swing, you know, the club at balls. And, you know, it's, it's guys that, that have that kind of work ethic. That's what makes them great, right? Like Jordan, it's the natural ability, but their desire to be that good, to spend that much more time. Oh, Henry, you've heard my, Mike, you've heard my Michael J. Fox story, have you? I probably did tell it another time. Yeah, you got, I, I've only got like a couple stories. So you guys, they, they make the rotation. Every other, you know, five streams, you just get the same stories you just stay in here chatting with me and appease me, right? And then and the other 20 people drop out of the stream. They're like, oh, not this one again. The, Sto the Scotty Pippen story, the Value Hunter and Scotty Pippen story. But, um, yeah, dude, I played Michael J. Fox and he played cards head-to-head -head for like eight straight hours. <laughs> eight straight hours at the table, if you can imagine that. Dude. Were, it was like, I don't know. I think I was drinking V8 because it was the closest thing to a meal that I could get without leaving the table. I thought if I got up and left that, you know – that uh, Alex Keaton would be gone. And I didn't want to lose my opportunity to play, you know, blackjack with, with Alex Keaton all night, you know? Yeah, I've had some pretty cool run-ins with musicians over the years too, man. And and athletes, some different athletes too. I got a good one with Troy Aikman and, and Tom Feisman. Oh my gosh, I had a drunk guy ask Tom Feisman how the leg was doing one time at the, at the craps table. That was nuts. Met uh, Jerome Bettis, the bus. Uh, dude, that guy's thighs are like the size of my waist and I'm not a small guy. Okay. Like the dude, I, I mean, you, you can understand what he did on the field when you see the size of his leg. It's like a tree trunk. It's literally the size of my desk. I can't even, I can't even describe how big that guy's thighs are. It's like he walks over and he's short, but he walks over next to you and you're just, it's like, he, I think his pants were too tight on purpose. <laughs> Like to show off this this guy's quads. I mean, the dude's just a maniac. I mean, his legs were huge. But um, but yeah, Michael J. J. Fox. I got a funny one with him, and unfortunately, it was later in life. Uh, you know, or re more. It was. It's, it's been a long time ago, but he was already suffering. You know, so it was one of those things where it was like, man, it was tough to like see him in that state because I grew up on that guy. Man, it was that's Teen Wolf right there. You know, that's Teen Wolf and Marty McFly. Mm. Anyway. I would say Jordan, I've watched a lot of basketball and there's nobody like him. And, you know, like Tiger Woods, that kind of work ethic, Jordan did the same thing. He'd show up and practice before everybody and he'd be practicing after everybody. And, you know, same thing with Tiger. Like there may be like, you know, the Golden Bear or, you know, you, you get other golfers in history, even going back longer than that, Sneed and some of the guys, you know, Bobby Jones, all these guys in the back that played really great at their, against their competition. Right? They couldn't be touched. And that's why they won so much, right? So you get the Grand Slam events meant something different. The, you know, all these different things meant something different because 
they were playing against competition that wasn't, you know, and with equipment that wasn't, you know, the same. So when you had somebody that put that much work in, it was that good, you know, they, you know, they, they, they made a name for themselves, but to watch these guys play, right? There's certain people in history you just watch them play. It was almost like they didn't have to, it was like they were, un, you know, unconscious when they're playing. It was like they, they, they turned into somebody else, right? Jordan was that way. Tiger was that way. I mean, you know, if that guy could have, you know, just, he's still great, but you, you, if he could have just got a hold on his, um, if he, if he, he could have got a hold on his, uh, his personal life, I think he would have had a, a much more impactful career. Um, no, Henry, these are not up for auction. This is, this, this is a prototype, one of a kind right here. He might have poured another one of these since then, but I was like, I got to have that. And this, I mean, I, I don't even want to say what I paid for these because I got them at like Dean's auction, which was for, you know, a good cause, right? So I should do a video of my community pours and show off. I, I've got a huge cigar box full of community pours that, um, and a lot of them are just, you know, kind of bite size like this. So they're kind of cool to, you know, be able to chat and talk about. Um, what do I have that I can put up for auction? Um, I don't really have, you know, kind of my more high dig items. I've kind of moved on, but is there really? It's latency, man. It says my stream is healthy, so I don't know why. So you're hearing my chat. I just got to leave something static like this, right? Or I'll just chat with you guys and go to the logo screen, right? And go like that. And then I can just chat with you guys and, and you'll be like, okay, he's pretty much done. <laughs> hey, Jeff Dunn, good to see you. And, uh, and I will, I got to go through emails and I got to do a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, we grew up on the same stuff, Joe. We're like the same age, I bet. Yeah, well, of course, because he's part wolf, dude. Only on a full moon, though. That guy couldn't hit three pointers unless he, uh, you know, grew an entire body full of hair, right? I mean... <laughs> Yeah, Henry, that was it. I mean, that's the list for the day. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I appreciate uh, – I'm, I'm trying to watch the chat. I should pop it out. Let me pop out my chat and see if that helps. Maybe it refreshes. Oh, now it's gone away. Okay, there we go. How about now? Now I'm on top. Let me go to live. If I pop it out, it goes to live. When I'm in the studio version, it doesn't. All right, so I'm gonna type something and say something at the same time. Count it down, guys. Ready and on my mark, one. Now you count the seconds from the time I said that until it hits, and you're like, okay, he's five seconds later, he's 30, or he's 40, because you saw it in the chat right when I said the number one. Not that it matters. 10 or 11 people still hanging out in here, calling it a. Yeah, I had the eye candy on. Probably better, better that stuff than looking at the the logo, the the uh, the negative of my lo of my logo type. <laughs> Henry types one. That, that was about forty seconds, huh? Wow. Hey, thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. Sharp eye. I'm at um. That was your one, huh? Wow. So it is about 40. It's like I'm almost a minute behind. Yeah, I probably I don't know how to refresh a stream once I'm going. I think it's a latency issue. And when I start my streams, what I need to do is um, set the latency to ultra low latency in the studio. And then it will go. Uh, it will go to, you know, the chat matching up with what I'm saying and the video matching up with what I'm saying. I think that's how you correct it. But I'm not I'm not like 100 percent sure. Henry, you kind of did. Dude, I tried to email you, Henry, because I know you don't get notifications. You know what's weird? I I, uh, I went and checked my wife's account to see if she got a notice that I was going live and she did not. I'm only 12 away. Well, look, man, I'm going to do I'm gonna do a giveaway at 1,000, but I'm not going to announce it. I do use Streamlabs. Yeah, I'm on OBS, Sharp Eye. Do you know the program well enough to like walk me through it? We should do a stream sometime. 
on like maybe this midweek or maybe after the Wednesday night auction on Cajuns, you can hang out for a little bit with me. And, and like, if you know how to fix this stuff, cause I, I've had Shay Huffmeister over at Mantic Coins walk me through it to get me set up to the point where you guys see what you see on my auction. But like, as far as tweaking the settings, I would have to go through another, you know, troubleshooting because I really, I'm not really super 100% comfortable with the software yet. I, I'm still learning. That's why I like launched three auction streams last week, back to back to back, because I kept launching it in the app in OBS. And then I didn't realize what I needed to be on was the upcoming stream. So I was on live. So I was going live on YouTube. Meanwhile, I was not live yet on OBS and then vice versa, like three times. So Coin Dragon says it's at 9.85. Sick, dude. Like we're exactly the same. Shay rocks, man. Shay is the bomb. D dude's just, you know, selflessly helps out everybody in the community that he runs into. Super cool. I wish he would go back to doing hunts uh, because I used to love getting on there and getting the roll for free and finding a DDO. Like every time I go on there, I've got like multiple DDOs from the Huff Meister himself uh, or Adriana. But the problem is, hey, that's okay, Brando. I mean, you don't, you know, look, you start putting out content. You just watch, man. It'll start building, you know, like look at, look at Joe. He was probably at 12 as well. When he hit the big show win, right? I mean, he didn't really have much content or any. Then all of a sudden, the guy's got, you know, he's celebrating 200 subs like a month later, you know? So, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that I've done everything you can not to be self-promotional as far as subscribers. I did the 500 sub giveaway. Um, I did a pretty big package. I did three giveaways uh, because I collect personally Canadian, Mexican, and U.S., uh, mostly that's like my three, that's like the, the cornerstone of my silver co uh, collecting and mostly sl silver coinage more so than copper or anything else. Right. So that's what I gave away. I gave away a package to three subs at 500, but I, I like, I decided also on a thousand, I'd rather get there organically. I know a lot of guys do things to promote and they jump up to a thousand and then they go to two and three, but you know, I, I they got a lot of subs because they're doing free giveaways. Also, they produce a lot of content. Like you get guys out there doing one or you know, a video a day or one every two or three days. I, other than my auction stream and like maybe one or two a week on unboxings, I'm trying to do one a month and I have a hard time with it. <laughs> you know, coin dragon. It's like, I know what you mean, man. It's like, it's, it's easy to be spread. And then that's what happened to me. I think with Dean's auction is I, a lot of people jumped on cause they wanted to be a part of it, show support for Dean, get something for free, whatever. It's all good and be a support. Like it was good and bad with it, you know, or not bad, but good and kind of selfish motivations, right? I know, well, I'm going to do a special video for that, Henry. And apparently a lot of what he's given me is his new prototype stuff. So it's things that are not out in the community yet. So it's going to be really neat. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's the way it is. It's not, if, if you do it naturally, like I've been on this thing, I, I, like Silver Bean Counter, right? Like my trade with him, I probably got a hundred subs off that one trade I did with him. And I sent him coins and he sent me poured silver or maybe stamped silver. I don't know. It was an MK bars, uh, his, his original channel bars, which I think I got the last pair, <laughs> uh, you know, of those where, cause he has like the reverse version of it. And I think I got the last pair of two that he had. I'm not sure. But anyway, I sent him a, a proof set. And the proof set that he got, he videotaped it outside and the coins were like blinding. They were so awesome, right? And literally all people started subbing me up right away when that happened. And it was like, okay, they're cool in what I'm in. They're, 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 they're into what I'm into, right? They're into the same stuff. So it was like, okay, these are the people that are my, these are my peeps, right? They're my community members that I want because I can interact with them. We're, we're, it's like you and me, Joe, like we, you know, somehow we found each other on YouTube where you bought some things off my auction because you heard about me from Paula because you were, you know, a winner of the big show, right? Or whatever. But we find out we're like the same age. We're into the same things. You know, it, it's like, you know, we're, we, we kind of collect the same stuff. We have similar tastes, you know, and the next thing you know, it's that way, you know, so... Brando, you probably picked up five, you probably doubled your subs while you're on this stream, right? Or you got 50% increase. <laughs> so it's easy to get a 50% increase, but that's the nice part about it, man. It's like a huge, <laughs> everybody get over there and sub up Brando show. Okay. Find him on YouTube 
under B R A N D O capital S H O Brando show in the house. I'm going to send a separate package. I think Brando, um, I was going to send you an email on that because you bought some more stuff and I would have to go to the post office and get a bigger box because I got you in a medium, I think from last week. So I'd have to upgrade to a, I mean, it's packed to the gills. So, you know, I can, I can, I can adjust the address and I can go large for uh, large box, like a first rate, first, uh, what is it? Priority uh, large box. Um, I know we'd be hanging out. Do, Joe, I'd be over at your house. Like, okay, I, I got my, you know, set up laptop, whatever, or you'd be over at mine. We'd be hanging out talking coins and probably streaming against each other from the same room. <laughs> I think like, I don't actually, I was talking about Shay Hoffmeister. He, he lives pretty close to me. I, I could be doing that, but he hasn't been streaming a lot lately. I've been bummed out that he's been off there. Um, but good people, you know, and it's like you find that, and this community is chock full, like right. That I don't mean to overlook anybody in the chat. Coin Dragon's another one, right? Like just unbelievable, good people, selfless, wants to help people out, loves the hobby, um, you know, believes in real money, you know, believes in uh, and, and likes collecting, and and um, is a wealth of knowledge, and is willing to share that with others, and is not out there just for what's in it for himself. Henry Von Mega, right? Another just great community member, magnanimous. Um, you know, Zafael, stacker extraordinaire, good people, you know, friendly, just, you know, Jeff Dunn. Um, I go through the list. I'm, I'm scrolling up through chat here. I'm looking at all these names and I'm just like, man, these are just such good people. You know, high host silver is another one hidden. Great guy. Good sense of humor. You know, sometimes people take them wrong. I do. It's funny as crap. I swear. It gives me a, I get a, uh, I'm in stitches over, over a lot of stuff. Stacking AG, do big heart, great silver port, talented artist. Um, quad man, AKA quad stack are good people as well. Unbelievable coin collector. Got an eye for really nice coins. And that guy, you put something good up, that guy will be in the bid almost every time. I got some new people in here. I'm kind of at the top of the list. I can't even go back and, and see, but, uh, it is older than dirt. Oh, that's funny. Well guys, I mean, look, I've been streaming here for four hours. I got to get invoices out. So I think what I'm going to do, oh, drone. I love it. And metal, I've, so I've got a metal detector. The secret way that I bought myself a metal detector was I gave it to my youngest for Christmas. He's used it a couple times and gone out with it, and it's his. It's not the top of the line that I probably would have bought myself. Um, did you really? That's so funny. I'm actually, I'm actually down in Hill Country, a bit away from from there, probably five miles. But I actually go to church in, in Cedar Park, Coin Dragon, so I'm there every Sunday morning. It's so funny. A mid-sized Hoobson. That's got to be a drone. I don't know drone speak. I have to use. I, I've had them. I've had to use footage for work with them. But um, I, I like metal detecting. I've never really. I've gone once with my youngest. After buying it for him, he took it to the beach with us, and we went out. We found some stuff, but nothing of, you know, value. But it was cool to you know pick up some treasure and find some stuff. Pretty neat. You know, my dream is I'm gonna find a like buried pirate treasure. Like that's the whole. You know, that's why these gold pan. I'm telling you, Joe. Get over and watch California Motherload Prospecting, or I think it's called California Motherload. Anyway, that channel is like super hard to put down once you start. You'll, you'll, you'll binge watch this entire channel. Hey, Henry, great to see you too, man. Thank you for showing up. I'll keep you in the loop, man. Just watch your email from me if you're not getting uh, notifications because I know even my wife didn't get one. And I, I went to double check. I was like, I'm going to go on another person's channel to see if they get notifications and she didn't get one but then i looked under her subscriptions and it showed that i had announced you know nice yeah i figured a brand name it sound it it sounds you know that way and you had it capitalized so that was kind of a giveaway and it's describing it mid-sized you know i figured you weren't mistyping the word husband too, you know, you, you, if you said you had a mid-sized husband, Coin Dragon, I would scratch my head. I'd be like, "That's not the Coin Dragon." I know, somebody impersonating. Night, Henry. Yep. How many we got in the chat right now, guys? Let's see. I'm gonna go off logo to be able to tell. Eleven. 
You can do that, Henry. I'll text you if you'd rather, man. I don't really do that with many folks, but I've known you on here for years. So, um, yeah, good night to you too, my friend. Thank you for all the bids and support. And it was another fun auction. Got a lot of stuff up that was a blast to, to put on the block and sell. Got to move my collection down the road to some of you guys. And I will be back this week buying more stuff so that I can uh, keep doing it every week. It's a lot of fun. It's a hobby. For me, um, it's it's turned into you know a side gig almost, a side hustle, but it's really not. It's it's like the grab bag stuff, you know. It's like I do those just to you know enjoy the videos of people blown away by. I sent a guy a gold coin last week. <laughs> I'm like, I hope I didn't piss him off because you know he got way more than a hundred dollars worth of value in that in that package, and he did a shout out video for me, so that was pretty freaking cool. And he said he loved it. But it was only one, it was like two items in his bag. You know what I mean? Call the wife, do it, man. Yes, tell her. I know, yep, for sure. If you're away from home and on the road or whatever, you got to stay, keep that Keep that contact. Appreciate you, Brando. Appreciate you, Joe, Henry, Coin Dragon, everybody. Thanks for hanging out so late. I'll let you guys go. I'll get invoices out tonight. I'm going to take a break to eat something. And once my brain is functioning, I'll be back. Thank you all for joining the little show or the small show. I haven't really come up with a title yet. Next time there's a big show, I'll have it down.